6.06 p.m. and uh, welcome to everybody. Um, let's see. So Cindy, you're first. That one's for you. This is this could be good. Okay. There. That's good. Let's go. Okay. Great Perfect. All right. I'm Cindy Riddle. I live on Diggins Road. Been there since 2016 with my family. We live at the um, Fire Pond. Um, it's a Class Four road, and I just have concerns about new development in the area, and wanted to start the discussion of if there's going to need to be some upgrades on the road. And there's been rumors in the past that have kept the subdivision dormant um, that's across the street. So I'll try. I'll read from my notes because I'm going to get distracted and. But I do have concerns about the class four section of Diggins Road. The class four section starts at Jim Fontaine's driveway and continues on to the end of the road. That's all class four. The town has been plowing up to the fire pond. And that's the section I'm concerned about it is from Jim Fontaine's driveway to the fire pond. That's all class four. The Kusro subdivision is it enters right at the at the fire pond. It's been it was built 17 years ago. It has eight lots. There's been no development in it. There are no homes. Um, but now one of the lots has been resold. They've all been sold numerous times. Um, and that owner is preparing to build and put in a, a formal permit to the town. They're working towards it. Um, the building envelope was reestablished this fall uh, with um, Ron gave permission to do that. In the past few weeks, they have surveyed the building site. They have set flags for the building corners and the well placement. I spoke with the owner today and they're hoping to build a 2,500 square foot home and they would like to break ground this summer. The architect is scheduled to have a preliminary meeting with the DRB next week on March 29th. And as one of the homeowners on that road of Diggins Road, I hope that you can help us understand what is going to happen now, now that the subdivision is going to be moving forward, what happens to us and what happens to everyone on the road. Um, will the road need to be upgraded to a class three on that steep section? There was erosion control done last year. The ditches are much deeper. Thank you very much. It's wonderful, but it is feels slightly narrower and I'm not sure it's because of the ditching. Two large vehicles cannot pass on it, and I just skipped over, I shouldn't have. Um, anyways, the road is steep. Um, who will pay for upgrades if it is the case? Will this new landowner be required um, when he gets his building permit to up pay for all the upgrades to that road? Or in, there's been rumors in, or discussion in the past that all of the lot owners in the subdivision would have to share the cost. And some of them overpaid for their lots years ago. And it would be a shame if they had to, because they thought they were buying land on a class three road. So will the current owners that already live on the road have to pay, or will the town cover the cost if that's what's, if the road has to be upgraded? If the upgrade is not required for this person to build, if the construction vehicles end up showing that that class four section that's steep cannot handle more traffic Will there be any options? Will the town come in after a few heavy days of construction? Will they come in and regrade the road so that it's passable for all of us? Or will the construction crew be required to run a, ro run a roller on it so that it not, it's not degraded? I don't know the rules. I'm not a contractor, and I don't know any of the answers to all this. Um, there's also sections of the road that are too narrow for large vehicles. And last year, there were cases where the 16 yard trucks were coming up Diggins Road. 16 yards trucks were coming out of a driveway. They needed to get in the same driveway and there was nowhere. We were stuck on either, traffic was stuck on either ends and those two couldn't pass. This case is going to be harder because there's a, a curve that's very narrow. So if two trucks are coming at each other, they're going to have to back up through a narrow curve with deep ditches on either side. So I am worried about the curve. Um, and also even just more traffic at that curve. There's spots where if two, two diesel trucks can't pass at that spot, 
one has to give way to the other, just for a small section. Um, so, um, sorry, I skipped this. Um, and so then if, if one owner builds in the subdivision, the other lots may follow suit and sell their lots and have new builders in the area. Um, I don't think any of the owners that have lots right now are considering building themselves, but I don't know. I don't, no one has plans right now, but if they sell those lots um, with only four homeowners on the road now, if they start selling, it could end up being 11 households if that subdivision moves forward. Can the road really handle 11 households on that steep section? Um, at what point, when is the point when the number of households says, okay, it's time to, to upgrade the road? Um, is there a number? Is, I, don't, I don't know what the procedure is for that. Um, will the road eventually need to be paved because of the gradient? Is it a 15% and, and how many households have to live on the Diggins Road when that happens? Um, um, we will be impacted. Those of us that live on the road will be impacted with this and just hope that you will help us understand what the procedures are of moving forward, what the options are and how we can participate and know what's going on. And I, we are, my husband and I do own a lot in the subdivision. We do not plan to build. We bought it just so it would be protected. Um, and in here, I just, in 2019, I was not part of, we were not part of the subdivision. And there was a meeting um, that one of the owners came. Was, and I, I wasn't there, so I don't know if he was representing his personal lot and wanted everyone to help pitch in. I don't, I don't know what the situation was, so I, I would like clear, some clarification of what, I only heard rumors afterwards that all the other lot owners said they wouldn't pitch in. But I no, don't. It, was a, it was an informal request after we had received an informal request about making upgrade to class three because we were already plowing. Right. And the cost to do that was evaluated. So we just wanted to see what that would be. So let's say it's 150,000. Right. That number was tossed around and the select board said, I wonder if the, we could split it with the neighbors up there because that's a lot for the town to take on, even though it was going to generate new housing investment potentially. Right. And there was no consensus or no group meeting or no path forward because I think the board probably would have put more energy into it if there was everybody's on board, we're going to make this happen. Uh, they, uh, uh, make it up, make the upgrade. Uh, make the upgrade. Mm -hmm. I think from what I heard, they all felt like they had paid so much for their lots that they... Yeah, so it never, it never moved so past never the, I, the potential idea of upgrading to from a class four to class three. So, and I've asked this numerous times in emails, if, if someone does, so with the people now, are they gonna, do they have a clear way to move in and they don't have to upgrade the road? Are you gonna be okay with that? They, there's no determination yet because nobody's applied for a construction permit. But they've already, I'm, I guess my problem is, is they've bought the lot, they're spending the money preparing the lot, they've been working with an architect, they have their hopes and dreams on this. Mm -hmm. They've set the flags, they've done the surveying. Those are a lot Can, of, those are that's a, lot, a, that's a lot of emotional things to go in there. To, are you going to drop a ball on them and say, well, I guess you need to upgrade the road. Yeah. Is that fair to them? It's part of the permit process, so you don't, we can't predict the future. But is it like that if it was a class three road? Say yeah, this was with any, any road that has it doesn't matter. Well, what class oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't what the class oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, any road that has a prior permit in this case has right. permits and conditions. I wish you would have told me that because I thought it was just this subdivision. No, no, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I thought it was just the class Some three class four. Some go in without any approvals needed at all because they're on a main road and there's a you know capacity for that new project. So there's no conditions on most projects. When you have a project that's up in the back 40, a lot of times the town will start applying improvements requirements before you can develop that property. And a lot of times the subdivider gets that subdivision permit with all those conditions and passes them on to the buyers. And then you're talking about a legal issue between a buyer that wasn't told. We have another case that just went to environmental court because of this on the battle road. 
where the, the buyer invested in a lot with permits already in hand from the subdivision, but disagreed with the subdivision permit conditions. So that case is going through environmental court. They, they can't build a house. There's no guarantee they can build a house. They're two different permits. The subdivision permit is totally separate from the construction permit. Okay. Well, I'm glad I don't want to build anything because I no still guarantees. because I still don't know the answer. There's no guarantee. No, there's no guarantee. There's no gold. There's no magic <laughs> lens that we could look at and say they're going to be able to. Now, there's none. I don't understand. I guess I don't understand it. So I'm glad I don't want to build. Yeah. <laughs> it there, should be there's easier. A, there is a development review board, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to go to that next week. So yeah, that, that that's be, the first step that they've decided to do. Is yeah. yeah. And so they're still trying to figure out the degree of what they face. And part of that is next Tuesday. Okay. So since I'm just a resident on the road, I don't have to look forward to paying for upgrading the road, do I? Or is that a potential that all landowners that currently live on the road someday will get a bill to up? Is that something that. It'd be based on the permit, wouldn't it? But I mean, if I already live there. Yeah. yeah. And, and in 10 years. Yeah, there's too much traffic. Yeah, typically, what if there's, if, what, we're, what you're talking about is a subdivision permit condition to make road improvements. That's what you're talking about. Your lot is already I, existing. There's no subdivision permit but No, no, I'm, I'm saying at my farm where I already live that was yeah. built in 97. I don't think you have any. I, mean, I don't this, have any. You're asking legal questions because I don't know if your chain of title, somewhere buried in there, is a requirement to upgrade the biggest road. And I, I, I can't, can't see that. So right. say that right. It would be in your deed or in your title search, you know. So okay, right. So I can't answer it truthfully because I have not done a title search on right. your property. Right. The owner of lot one is trying to get through the permit hurdles, if you want okay. to look at it that way, to get a house. Okay. And that's a long process. They have to jump over each one, whether it's a state or town permit. So that'd be one thing that you want to do before next week is look at your your um, your deed and see if there's anything in any stipulations that you agreed to when you uh, bought the bought house. the property, yeah. From bought that. the property, yeah. yeah. And just see if it's in there. Mm -hmm. And usually, if anybody looks at it, something like that usually sticks out in their mind and, and uh, it's a red flag for them type of thing. Just like when I bought a property up here on uh, Gingras Road, uh, there's a community well that's actually on my property. And raise the red flag, and I always remember that after mm -hmm. type of thing. And what does it mean to me as a property owner? That type of thing. So, huh. Okay. So that that should be. So I should look at the deed. Me. I should look at the deed of the subdivision that I bought. Yes, look at both, right? In, in your your current house. one and and the subdivision, and the subdivision one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I quit. I'm going home. I know. <laughs> Well, I mean, you've definitely done it. good research, so you've well, got lots of great questions. I've tried. I, yeah. I said, but, it, but so we don't know the answer. It, it, will, it, will, we do it will resolve itself one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. But there's no answer tonight. Yeah. But, but your your deed might might tell you what your answer is. On yes. your particular property. Uh, then your yeah. lot one will be resolved through the permit process. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hopefully, there's some help. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to be at that board meeting too. So. I'll be, yeah, I'll come next. I'll, come yeah, next week. I'll try to be there. Same place. Yeah. Same place. Same place. All right. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> We're not doing things. I know. <laughs> Have a good evening. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. Have a good night. Can you turn the room? No, you're gonna come up. Yeah, if you don't mind, but yeah, leave them on your chair away. Probably leave the leave the chair right there <laughs> for anybody else. Well, my name is Bill Hogue. I'm the owner of Two Sons Big House. Just opened up uh, oh, yes. two weeks Over ago. Oh yeah, here on Main Street. Welcome. And uh, thank you. Uh, I'm applying for a liquor license, and I just want to introduce myself to you guys. Answer any questions, comments, or concerns you might have about that. That you're you're a good candidate for these, which are later on the agenda. So okay. we have we have it from the town third. So. The and his is in there to yep. approve? Yep. Oh, good. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Jay and C. Jay and sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So a lot of times, uh, just for board's background, there, there's usually two times when you have a liquor license discussion. One of them's today. Okay. <laughs> first time, first timer, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then whenever there's an incident or multiple incidents due to the um, alcohol and beer present. 
and that's really because you're potentially as a licensee are not following the state rules and that feeds out to the community and then the state has enforcement and the town's own only enforcement is not issuing it right got it so right. generally it's just a uh, annual renewal and okay. everybody keeps moving along and there's no issues with unless you individually or have somebody come to a meeting and say there's big problems with that new place and then we'll investigate talk to sure. you and all that stuff but sure. we haven't had that issue with 10 bangs brewery we haven't had the problem with vfw um Fork and Gavel, yeah. did yeah, they have? Yeah, the, they're the third one, Fork and Gavel. Right. But did so. they have a liquor? Yeah. Yeah, 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 they they did. Did. yeah. So those three are the only ones so that normal. The, the, right. the history looked promising. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's yeah. good. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But then I also wanted to meet you guys. And yeah, we well, appreciate you, you coming in, Bill. And, yeah. Uh, thank you for choosing our town to. Uh, well, it's a good spot. <laughs> I kind of like it there. So. It is a good yeah. spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Are you going to do outdoor seating? Well, yeah, you build those patios out there. so I know. Yeah. Um, you know, not, not trying to do anything too crazy. Uh, but we are going to have dinner. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Uh, by the end of April, we'll be doing that. Yeah. Great. That's why I like to have a little bit of a cocktails in there. You had yeah. a really sure. quick startup, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he called me once and I think I'll be open in a month. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. I think yeah. You did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You get the money set on something, you do it. Right. Yeah. Right. Good. So it's, uh, it's gone well so far, and I uh, just want to keep plugging away. Great. Great. Awesome. I'll be looking right. forward to coming over and. and uh, you haven't been yet? Haven't been <gasps> I haven't yet. No. Yeah. Oh. Well, you better get in there. You better, better get in there. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll let you guys get on the rest of your night. But yeah. I did want to introduce myself. Yeah, and uh, Thanks for taking the time. We'll get that. Next time I come in, I expect you to come to the front, though. Well, you got to ask for me. I know if I know you're out there. I asked about you. They said you're in the back. Yeah, that was uh, our busiest day yet so far. Yeah, we are good. So that was a good thing. Well, thanks for your time. Everybody have a great night. Yes, thank take you. Take care, And then I'll see you on basketball, I guess. Huh? <laughs> All right, take care, guys. See you later. Take care. Is there anybody that Roland's on? <clears throat> oh, there he is. I can see him. Can you, can you ask if Susan's there? Uh, Susan? Uh, Bartlett. Bartlett, are you there? Hi, this is Denise Green. I'm here and I wanted to, I came in to just talk about the, um, the Be the Change and um, the Meadow Hermit, I guess you're looking for the donation. Um, and I just wanted to say that the Hyde Park Energy Committee is, um, is really committed to our Love Your Lawn campaign. And this is a really nice part of it because having some of the property at the town office converted to a meadow is is really going to help us with our program um you know people will be able to see what's being done and they'll be able to enjoy it and um and understand a little bit better about how to do this in their own property so um i just came in to to say that and hope that um you will approve that um that little upgrade in the property being put into meadow. So, and I have to run. So thank you for your time. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So any more public comment or anything? Hey, on it's Mike Foss. How are you? Hi, Michael Foss. I was on my way there from work. I'm just not there yet. So I was just listening in until we got closer. I didn't know if I get there in five minutes, if I'd be able to speak or if it's easier just doing it on the phone. Uh, it's up to the chair. I think we have an agenda item for you at some point. Yeah, we do. I mean, is it the end? Yeah. Okay. I just want to let you know I am coming. Yep. Good. You're on your way. Okay. Yep. Okay. We'll see you when you get here, Mike. All right. And Liz Courtney and Al Spitzer from Guyhan Valley Hall are here, but I think we're the next one on the agenda. So we can wait and if there's anyone else who isn't already on the agenda. You want to take that? Guyhan Valley Hall. Yeah, yeah, try to stay in order because people will come in. And so you want to do the slate of uh, town orders then? Um, no, GVH is first. Okay. On my agenda, number two. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Who 
Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go on Valley Hall. Okay. Um, so I guess there's two things we're here to talk about. Um, I can briefly talk about this um, grant that we want to apply for, and then Al Spitzer, who's our chair, might be able to speak more to the, the second question, which is about property lines. Um, so we are hoping to apply for a grant from the state's community development program. They have block grants um, specifically for accessibility modifications. And we recently did a study um, with an architect who specializes in accessibility and fire safety, who provided a very helpful um, multi-page report giving us recommendations on how we can bring the Gaihan Valley Hall up to code as far as current ADA requirements, as well as fire safety. So we have a clear picture of, of some of the work that we want to do. Um, it includes things like widening the ramp out to get into the building, um, widening the accessibility to the bathrooms downstairs, um, redoing the first floor ceiling so that it's up to fire code to allow us to start doing events on the second floor um, and adding a second floor, a, an additional exit on the second floor with an exterior um, fire escape stairway. So we wanted to speak to the select board because this grant is not something that we as a committee can apply for directly. We can do all the work of you know writing the grant and um, all the follow-up on the grant, but it needs to be applied for actually by a municipal official. So we're asking for your blessing to go ahead with beginning the process of applying for this grant. And the whole process will, should take about two months. They need to do an environmental review. There also needs to be a public hearing because it's state money. I guess there's just a lot of hoops we have to jump through, but we've started talking to um, one of the the consultants over there who helps people through this process. So I think as a next step, we would like to have another meeting with her and, and introduce her to whomever from whether, I don't know if it would be you, Ron, or if it would be someone from the select board um, to just talk about the next steps. So I guess our question is, do we, do we have your blessing and who might be our person who would work with us on applying for the grant? Okay. So would that be you, Ron? It's playing, helping them play. Yeah. Game. So uh, think of it in a multiple step process, Liz. So the first step is tonight, where you would get uh, uh, cons uh, consent to move forward with the application. So that that means the select board's not going to pull it out at the last minute, hopefully, and say we never should have applied, you know, because it's a little bit of work on these particular grants to get things together. So the concept is really ADA fire safety and preparing the second floor for better use. So the concept of the application is pretty clear. The details of the application are what you'll need to work on next. And it's sort of like the choice of, do you have them come back with a just about as complete application as they can get due to the timing of the deadline versus your meetings? and present the application and maybe has a budget and those kind of things? Or do you let them just go for it and then you decide on the grant award whether to accept it? So those are the kind of the immediate steps. After the grant award, Liz already said, they'll take it from there and do grant compliance and make sure everything happens and reporting. Yeah. But the first few steps it can be like a two-step process or a three-step process, however the board wants to go. We don't have a lot of information tonight, so at least one more checkpoint whether that's before the application submitted or before the awards accepted. I think that's how I'd outline. Are, are, are you requesting any match towards your grant? This is a, this is a. So they would require us to pay for 10% of the total cost. And right now based on, and we can, we can, the grant is up to a hundred thousand dollars. And based on what we have from um, Bill Gallup, the architect who put together that recommendation for us, we have about $100,000 worth of work that we could do um, easily. We would talk to Julia from um, the Community Development Program to help us maybe narrow down the scope of the project. So maybe we don't do all of those things. It kind of depends on what would actually qualify. 
for accessibility. So like, I don't know yet if some of the fire code stuff would count towards this, to, to like towards this grant. So if that would be in the scope or not. Um, so anyway, it, it would be up to 10% of the total cost would be our responsibility. We could go and find another grant to cover that amount. Um, but that amount wouldn't be more than $10,000. It might be less if we do a smaller scope. So you'll have to do some, you, you got to have a layout, I guess, of, uh, of what, uh, what you're looking to spend it on, right? Uh, you've got an idea, but you've got to have more specific and, and probably pricing for those items that will be done. We do have pricing based on the report that, that Bill Gallup put together for us. It's initial estimates. Yeah. So I think we have all that. Um, the question is whether we're asking to get funding for all of what's in that or just a portion of it. So when was that done by Mr. Gallant? Um, maybe about four or five months ago. Okay. Fairly recently. How much your uh, your costs of uh, of construction materials and stuff like that because they're fluctuating uh, yeah. pretty well too. That can make an impact into it as well. Um, but yeah. Um, so we just need a motion to uh, for them to go with, ahead. Yeah, I think so. With the with the next step. What, what do you, what, when do you want them to come back? I guess it's a, okay. kind of a twofold motion. Yes, proceed, but come back with what? The ap application completed before it's submitted, I guess is another, the next step. That's what you say, so moved. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I Okay. Second. I second it. <laughs> okay. There's no, there's, because, no cost, there's no cost to the town right now. No cost. Right. No cost in, in, in there. Yeah, there's there's no I, I think. Yeah, they just need They're to going to work. Yeah, let's move forward. But uh, yeah. bring us an application we can read and understand it. Yeah. So you got the okay to go forward. Okay. And then, uh, let us know uh, when you've got your, your next step and we'll go forward with that or see how we go with that. Would anyone want to be involved in an informational meeting with a representative from the program? And then there's also another woman who runs the environmental reviews. Um, who could tell us more about what's involved in that? Do you want us to just do that and report back, or would anyone like to join that meeting? Should I? Since I'm uh, you're on your I, yeah. I knew you guys were going to say that. <laughs> I went back to my notes. <laughs> I was over here. <laughs> They're passing the buck to me, Liz, but I'll be happy to join that meeting. <laughs> okay, great. She's your liaison. So, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Great. Um, and then when I brought this up via email to Ron, he thought, well, there's if we are talking about getting funding to build an exterior fire escape to the building, there is the question of the footprint of the building and exactly where the property line is, because there's been some uncertainty over whether our current um, rear exit to the building, there's a small stairwell in the back, whether it's actually on the neighbor's property or not. Um, I don't know too much about this matter, so I'm going to pass the mic, I guess, to, to Ron and Al to talk about this and what we're looking to explore. Yeah, we've, we've known for a long time that, that that stairwell, the emergency fire escape in the back, was built like 20 years ago. We've known that, that that's not in the uh, right-of-way of the building. All the maps and deeds and things say that the property is the drip line. And I actually was up there today and there was a little bit of snow and it's pretty obvious where the drip line is. It's like a knife edge. And it's only about three feet from the building. And, and uh, right now that whole stairwell sits on the neighbor's land or hangs over the neighbor's land. And the new one that we want to build would be from the rear of the building, the center of it, down the back and coming around the corner and coming in and incorporating the one that's there now and joining them together. But that also obviously would be a uh, part of it would be on the neighbor's land. So uh, I, I suspect we'll have to have a survey done. I don't know. That's up to the select board to figure that out. But, but uh, or you could maybe just get a right away from uh, Mrs. Rondo. Well, that's where we're at. And it, it's the same right away on both sides. 
we have no use of it on the other side, but only for this uh, fire escape. Do we need to have an easement or something from the? Well, I well, it came up with one of the preliminary application questions was, do you own and control the project, proposed project? No. So that's that was a no. I'm sure they want it checked off at some point. The method to do that, that. I, I don't know if an easement would work. Typically, structures are on your own property, but there's not a lot of room between the two properties. So, is there some other tool that gets you that? You know, what, what about the zoning setbacks? I mean, there's just basic stuff that wasn't done the right way before. So, um, I don't know those answers because they're, they're kind of like more the legal questions. Would Bobby Joe Rain Doe want to work with us at all as the immediate neighbor? Does she say no? I've Thanks for putting me on notice that that's on my property. I don't want it anymore. We haven't even gone there yet, but this, this grant would trigger some of those questions. Okay. So I've done a little bit of preliminary survey, deed research. Uh, there's, there's nothing, nothing helpful for, I think I'm back about 40 years right now. It's just, you know, for Mr. Smith to Mr. Jones as deeded, you know, so I don't know where maybe in the 1940s, somebody actually took some measurements. But in the last 40 to 50 years, there hasn't been hardly any descriptions of the property. There are some pins out there and there's been some nearby properties that have been surveyed. Um, so I talked to Matt Reed, uh, who's a surveyor in town, just to see if he had any <coughs> new and he doesn't have a lot in that area. So it would be sort of a newer survey. Um, <coughs> I can do a certain amount of that work in grabbing deeds and giving it to a surveyor, but at some point, Somebody's got to make sense of it all. Um, possibly on April 12th, we could have a cost estimate just to see what we're really talking. Is it $2,000 or $12,000 for, for a survey to yeah. show where the actual lines are? Yeah, I think that would be something that beneficial for the project to move forward. At yeah. least to get a ball, at least if not a ballpark, a pretty good estimate based on the recorded documents where things might be. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and that would start to answer your next question of what do you do when you want to use neighbor's property basically right. yeah. do, you have, do you have to buy that can you come up with an agreement uh what about the zoning issues yeah okay so we can kind of pencil that in for the 12th al and liz that we'll have a little more discussion on survey on the 12th the board is meeting on the second and fourth tuesdays now just for everybody's information okay, okay. we'll set with Thank that you. Okay, so um, uh, Mike? Yes. Okay, let's let Mike. Uh, it's easy. Yep, so where are we at with? Uh, let me see. So on the agenda, we all we have is a notice from uh, basically the court, uh, court filings where the neighbors to Mr. Foss have filed an appeal with a Superior Court Environmental Division. And that process begins, really it's all legal at this point. So in most zoning cases where things aren't quite clear, so to speak, um, where the town doesn't know if it has a big interest or a little interest, the town attorney will file an appearance. That loops them into all the filings and court deadlines and gets them on like a certificate of service. Yeah. Um, we haven't been asked for any new information from the court. We haven't been providing anything. All we did was submit that the town attorney would uh, uh, enter the town as a party. The select board's role is really about the, the level of energy you want to put into it based on the impact to the town as a whole. So if somebody was coming at a case and said, oh, we, do, we disagree with that permit because your zoning regulations are ineffective, and it affects every property in town. You probably elevate the town attorney's time. Yeah. yeah. And this one, it's it's a the, from the statements that were filed, it seems like it's related to the no build zone and whether or not the DRB could have granted approval the way they did. Um, and the neighbors objected to that. So without any more information or a trial date or a conference that's been held, usually there's an initial conference. I haven't seen any notices when that might happen. The, the, judge may ask for all the parties to show up in a room and see what what this is all about and then decide how he's going to the court is going to handle it we haven't gotten that far yet so 
at some point the town attorney will say, oh yeah, we had the status conference and we're kind of getting into these issues and I recommend. Keep monitoring, let the neighbors duke it out, so to speak. Be a more active person, put more town resources into it because there's some risk to the town bylaw or town zoning, mm -hmm. uh, town plan, those kind of bigger issues that affect every other property in town. Um, but we don't know that yet. We, that, that'll evolve. So I don't, and that's a court schedule. We don't, we don't control the schedule okay. on that. The court will manage it. So that's where, that's where we're at. Um, the town did have an option as it does with any court case to not make an appearance. But generally with zoning permits, because it kind of evolves, you at least want to monitor for the beginning part. And then the board and town attorney will decide where, where, to, where it goes. So we should wait no and, more. and you have to decide too. I mean, Michael Foss is in the same position of what he does, because he could say, I, I didn't want to fight that hard. I'm just going to let, the, let them make a decision and whatever they come up with is fine. Not going to happen. You know, other, <laughs> the other one is he wants to defend what the DRB gave him because that was what he applied for and that's what he got approved for. So he's going to put some defense into it. And that's where you get into the extra cost that was not sort of anticipated. But the court system only deals with lawyers. It doesn't deal with lay people. So there's really no way to save money on that except to have an attorney that's really efficient with their time. And there's no there's no time frame. Nobody can. It's almost like the question before with Cindy. There's no magic ball when it gets resolved. People need to work on it, push the court a little bit to get decisions for you know quickly versus slow, those kind of things. But so I, don't know, I think I saw Frank and Dean up on the screen. I don't know if they wanted some time or are they just listening. But I, the two neighbors are up there. So that's all I have for an overview of where we're at. Any more comment? Not hearing any any more information from you or no, i I just came to see the update what yeah. was going on, what you guys have heard, and just wanted to see where it was at. And it's unfortunately in the court's hands and and uh, sometimes things move pretty slow in the court. So how long has this been going on? It's new last week, maybe. Oh, okay. They, they, so, they filed December 23rd. I was looking for it in the agenda. I couldn't find it. Yeah, there's an early agenda and a late. I just emailed the. I, I'm just getting caught up on it as well. Yeah, <laughs> the more current agenda is just emailed to you. Oh, guys. okay. So there's an older one that I put out on Friday, but there's some, some okay. tweaks. December 21, 2021, with the first final public hearing yeah. was held. So, a few months. So well, that's it for information and uh, wish it was more to tell you, but it's out of our hands in a sense right now at this point. Just so I educate myself. So he filed for his permit and in the filings, somebody appealed. Yeah, he, he applied in December maybe sometime. The DRB issued a decision and before the appeal period was off, they appealed that. It was an approval of what Michael had submitted. Okay. And there were some issues about survey and the house location on the survey there's a area boxed off on the survey that says no build zone which is where michael wants to build the town drb felt that that was not part of anything in the zoning so they approved where michael wanted to build which sort of left the neighbors up to a, a dispute on the value of a survey with a no build zone and i and that's what the court is going to have to make a decision gotcha. on. Yeah, I couldn't see that in the survey where it's, I see where he grew the house, but I couldn't see where it shows a no build zone. Yeah, that's on the recorded survey. I think you have a sketch of where, yeah. he, where he wanted to build, but I don't know. You're not objecting to the fact that the survey has a no build zone because that's part of the record. It's just the fact that the build, the no build zone was not part of the zoning and it didn't have any weight under zoning so that we didn't, we couldn't say no build. The DRB couldn't say we prohibit you from building there because it wasn't part of the town zoning rules. And it is where the site plan was. Yeah, the septic place. plan was designed there. The road was designed in the no build zone. There's a bunch of things happening in no build zone anyway. Gotcha. Uh, septic system, house location was proposed there, and the and the road, Green Park East Road, was built through that no build zone. And that's based on a wetland boundary. 
Uh, there's no wetland boundary. It was just a. Uh, no, it was over a handshake deal of someone scribbling on a map saying no build zone to make people feel better. Yeah, it was totally it was totally a deed issue, not a environmental issue. Yeah. Okay. So, next thing on the agenda, looks like the um, website posting of personal information, and I got a statement that I want to read uh, in regards to that. Uh, the town of Hyde Park is investigating an incident that was made aware of uh, from a third party uh, regarding a vendor list, which was inadvertently publicly uh, available for a limited time. Upon learning of this issue, we immediately removed the document from the from our website and commenced a prompt and, and thorough investigation. That investigation is ongoing and we cannot provide additional information at this time. To date, we are not aware of any reports of identity fraud or improper use of any information as a direct result of this incident. We will provide uh, notification where applicable uh, after the conclusion of our investigation. Does anybody else want to have any comments or anything about uh, the uh, breach of information that happened on our webpage? Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, can you say how many? Uh, can you say how many vendors were compromised in this? Uh, that's what that's what's being investigated. So I think that when we're done with all of that, that's what the um, outcome of the investigation will be, and we'll have a you know public statement and all that business when we're done. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any further comments? Or... And we'll move on. Um, let's see. The personnel policy amendments. Did everybody get a chance to look at those? Or... Looking good. <laughs> it's overdue. It's overdue. It better be looking good. Yeah. It is. What did they take looking out good. the uh, marriage staff? Personnel. Because of policy. not protected by that it. provision. It's okay. Legal. Yep. That was illegal. That's the only thing that really. Yeah, that was the legal stuff that I, that I think was probably there 15, nope. 10 years ago that we just, yeah. you know, you don't see until you, until somebody catches it. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it was a recent statutory change. It's just something that we caught as part of this review. Any questions, comments on the personnel policy? read it so many times now. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need the motion to accept it? Or? Yeah, so tonight was a checkpoint uh, just to make sure everybody had, this included a, a much more detailed survey on our summary on the first page. A lot of those things are were there. They just, I didn't, I wanted to bring them forward to the first page so everybody can sort of get a quick look versus sure. trying to find everything. Mm -hmm. um, the Draft changes have been talked about by the board for three mm -hmm. years now because we started working with the fire department way back yep. um, and trying to do their bylaws. Then the personnel policy was second. And no, yep, yep, that's why it's, yep. yeah, we had to, yep, I understand. Yep, we had to wait for that. 
Um, so yeah, the, other than just going through and cleaning up the strike version, and, and I think that Brian just showed the only spot where his name needs to be inserted under the sexual That's harassment the provisions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, if that's something happened, they come to me. Yeah, part of, the, <laughs> part of the harassment law is that you have to have a person uh, designate yeah. by name. So yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. update that for the chair of the board. And that should happen every year when the chair changes or every two or three years, whatever your yeah. schedule is going to be. But other than that, the personnel policy is relatively stagnant. There's just um, a, a good practice to do it five years or less and we're yeah. getting into year six. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these things our were added. Our employees are signing on to these every year? Uh, new hires do, and then if there's a revision, they do. Yeah. Not a, they don't get a copy every year, but they'll get, all get revisions of this. Showing your understanding. Acceptance of, of the policy, I think, is the, yeah. <laughs> they, they decide whether they understand everything in it, but yeah, yeah. It, it, handing it to them and getting acceptance is what we generally do. Any questions, Roland, from uh, about the personnel policy? No, I'm good with it. Okay. Can I get a motion to accept it? Yes, so moved. And a second? I second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstaining? Yeah, he's having it. Okay. Too many hands open. I didn't fill one of these out when I. Okay. We can probably. No, um, we don't have to. Shouldn't we have to? Oh, probably. Fine. We're employees, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, all the committees and boards are supposed to sign off on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm, we'll get the new revision. There's some things in there that apply anyway. True. So yeah. not everything applies, but some of it's good to have in there. So yeah. committee members don't get scared too much. But if you tell them we, you know, we, we just want them to read it. That's we're not yeah. gonna we're not gonna throw it in their face face uh, every day. Just we just developed a code ethics program for my company, so I can kind of get yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really about having it in place and letting people have it. And if you need it, it's there. But generally, you don't need it. Hopefully, everybody's Okay, the next one I think is the local board of health and uh, uh, the Rooney uh, place at uh, 3033 Center Road. Um, where are we at? I see that uh, uh, Susan's up there and Mike's up there. Yeah, so the... Um, Hyde Park Local Board of Health issued a health or final health order on the 22nd of February. Uh, health orders have a 30 day appeal period to the State Board of Health. Uh, the, Michael Rooney and Susan Dorn appealed to the State Board of Health and the next step is to wait for the hearing officer to schedule them. Similar to the environmental court case of Mr. Foss, um, a status conference, so that that board can figure out where things are at and uh, what the issues are and sort of get their head wrapped around what, what's going to happen. Then they start managing the case. So okay. that won't be us. That will be the hearing officer for the State uh, Department of Health. Uh, goes up to the commissioner's office, Dr. Levine, eventually. I don't know if he actually issues the decision or if it's an assistant secretary type person. Uh, but eventually they'll have a ruling. Okay. And it either will support the select boards slash board of health, uh, June one deadlines, because that's what's remaining in the health order is a series of improvements to the building that are due by June 1st, or it'll amend it or throw them out or whatever. I think they can do whatever they want with it at this point. Uh, but I think it's a little different than an environmental court. I think they still have to use your decision as a guide and then make a ruling and I don't know what all the factors are yet because we haven't had that process start. Same uh, representation will monitor it because uh, it is a, a important issue to the local board of health. You spent a lot of time on it and you had some good deadlines on there to make improvements to that residence. Yeah. Um, so we will monitor it and see how it goes. I just, we haven't figured out to what level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so both of these are very early, so I yeah. have the same response. As you get through it, you'll decide, oh yeah, we should just, looks like it's going along fine, we'll back off, or no, we're, we're going to get more involved and, and have somebody designated, have the town attorney pick it up, whatever it mm -hmm. needs. 
another meeting, but anyway, that's where it's at today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Dorn or uh, Mr. Rooney, do you have any comments or anything you want to add? I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you for asking, though. Absolutely. Okay. Moving on. Um, and then the liquor license. So we'll... Yes. Liquor licenses. Uh, Kim receives these and... Uh, processes them. It's a tabby on where you need to sign mm -hmm. three or more. And it looks like we have three uh, VFW. Sure. Uh, J and C Bread Company, which is yep. Mr. Hogue, mm -hmm. and VFW Post for a. Not sure. Ten Ben Brewery. I was say Ten Ben. No. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything from 10 Ben yet. Okay. Um, but I do want to remind you that um, the number of members present for the meeting are the number of people that actually need to sign the licenses. We had those questions come up during COVID. And the response was that any, anybody that's present board wise for the meeting has to sign the the licenses. So Roland's not physically present, but he's, you know, present for the meeting. Um, if, if, if any of them are going to be approved or denied or whatever, I would need him to stop by and sign those licenses. Uh, Kim, Kim, I think, excuse me, are all these forms the same where the members have to sign either under the approved or the disapproved? Is that correct? Yeah, so when you're signing, you'll see the two. <laughs> Don't sign the disapproved column by mistake. Oh, you okay. that, one <laughs> <laughs> that would be a problem. Yeah. Technically, you're meeting as the um, liquor control board for Hyde Park right now. So some, some boards will actually adjourn the select board, reconvene as the local liquor control board so to take the these. Fine. Yeah, well, you're acting as the local board of health when you sign those. Oh, sorry, liquor control board. So if you want to have a motion to sign the three with that, but adjourning, moving in, signing, and then getting out. That, that would be pretty, pretty technical, but works. Yeah, Kim, it looked like there was like three maybe for VFW. Do you, one was like a twenty dollar fee. I don't. I didn't really. I couldn't figure out quickly what they're all the. Well, so they have they have a first class, a third class, and an outside consumption permit. Okay, all right. That's sort of what Ten Bens would do eventually when they get around to submitting. Yeah. So does Bill need to look at the outside consumption permit? I think uh, 10 Ben's actually only does, they only do one thing, I think. Oh, okay. I'd have to look at the history of it, but I think it's the outdoor consumption. Okay. Yeah, and it, there was a, and I, I'm trying to remember something that's a little bit old, but is, was there a time when the town clerk was authorized to sign one of these? Was it the outdoor? No, no the town clerk is authorized to sign the um the catering permits right okay that's what i was thinking like of. the special event permits okay yep that's what i was thinking of thanks so you won't see those we used to bring them to the board but they happen so out of sync with your board meetings that um it just works better if the town clerk can do those got it okay um I take a motion, to take a motion on that three. Oh, we need to add put uh, it work it into a motion somehow the, a motion to accept the uh, liquor the three um yeah i suppose it's the licenses for the two properties 
the two? Yeah, yep. it's because you're signing them today. So <clears throat> that'll, be, that'll be good. So uh, a motion is needed to accept the uh, the two uh, liquor licenses that we just signed. So moved. Second. All those in favor, I signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Right. Hey, Anybody wrote. opposed? Yeah, I did too. Okay, looks like the lights have it. Okay. We didn't talk about be the change. Yeah, she did. She stepped in. Yeah, but are we supposed to? I'll, I have something to talk oh, about. Oh, okay. When you're ready to. Okay. You want to do that next? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're easy. <laughs> well, this is one of those uh, be aware discussions. Okay. Be aware. Be, be aware. Be. <laughs> okay. We weren't aware last time, uh, which is last spring when we let the hay grow up. And I don't know, towards the end of that event, I, I don't know if anybody took the time to look, but for some, that grass and the vegetation in, in the lawn, basically on the whole side between here and the highway, has a huge amount of different grasses, reds, yellows, green, dark greens, blues, and it only shows when it gets to mature. Yeah. Um, and we did have a lot of what this program was to, a lot more butterflies, a lot more uh, birds and bees and all that kind of stuff flying around in there. So the bee that changed has the same impact, but in more controlled, we're gonna mow here, we're gonna plant here. So bee the change came and they sent a flyer around. They're trying to do every town in Vermont to have, I think it's at least one acre of a recovered, grass to turn to meadow and that's the back 40 of some municipal property or some park or whatever here we have a deficiency on the front walkway um, the trees and the vegetation is mostly dirt and gravel well, you, you know yeah. it's mostly <laughs> dusty mostly dusty and they're going to come up with some plantings that will take start to take care of that and then the back hill we had three years ago uh, planted with wildflowers and that was good for about a year and a half and then the weeds and other stronger things take over and now you have sort of a natural meadow. You don't have the flowers and colors that it did in the first. So they're gonna redo that hill. The third spot is along the highway drive from um, Route 15 up just like a 10 foot strip along their drive edge. So that- Oh, um, this side, this side, this side. On this, this side, yeah. facing so the town the, office. Where the bank is, right? Yeah, so you, right, that left shoulder. So that was safe. Well, it ha it's difficult to mow too. <laughs> it is. You come around in there, and it, the guys are you know trying to get up on that hill, and there's a really wet spot in the back corner, which is uh, near where the sand winter sand pile is, and there's a lot of water coming into that from the town property today. So I don't know if that's really going to be a good planting spot. That's it's just going to be a bad place to mow, I think. Uh, so there's a two-year deal. They'll do this year. They'll do one more year of follow-up maintenance, and then the town will have to decide what to do after that. Um, but it's, it's, it matches with what the Town Energy Committee had been, got approval for last year. Uh, Meadows was approved as part of their three programs by the select board last year. So this is really just a, kind of kills two birds with one stone. We're cleaning up some approaches to the public space. And then we're also taking care of uh, their pollinator mission, which is the, the be, be the change idea. Mm -hmm. So we're again, no cost, the, no cost of us. The front right. lot, the, why, whatever happens out front, I just didn't have it perennials or something that comes up and flowers and mowing is the, the four trees, the four trees, two of those are probably gonna have to come down. They're kept now for the woodpecker. Maple grows, so you hear they're pretty yeah, along the walkway, there's a woodpecker feeder now. It used to be a maple uh, <laughs> on the left side. You probably saw the pile of chips at the bottom. And the other one's probably gonna go that way too, on the right side eventually. There's one of those in the backyard that's already converted. So we actually have two feeding stations, but that, that bird's at least 18 inches big when it's on that tree. Healthy, healthy. Very healthy. <laughs> and it has no problem knocking that tree down, you know, it's really crazy. So anyway, that's the plan for the property. It is a mix. Uh, this discussion didn't happen last year when it sort of naturally occurred. And then uh, Robert Laird came in and last year was sort of doing a volunteer mowing for us because uh, prior DOC crew, uh, the judges basically stopped sending help to the DOC work crew, which was our prior mower. Um, so Robert Laird, who's a firefighter, came in and decided to say, hey, I'll come in when it looks a little gnarly and I'll tune it up for you. And we gave him 50 bucks a mowing and it worked out pretty well. He was sort of timely with it, whether it needed it or not, he would make that call. 
uh, he's offered to do that again. So I got to have that conversation with him. And if DOC does get a four or five crew back, I was gonna say, you're gonna get crew back. Again? Well, there's nobody getting in trouble in Mobile County. <laughs> no, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, no. The, 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 it had been stagnant because of uh, COVID, right. and now we've reached out to the. The state's attorney in the court and told him we're ready to start business again. And yeah. it's slow, but uh, hopefully it'll pick up and we'll yes. be able to. Cause we've got all the fish and wildlife to do still. And yeah. They were calling. Everybody's been calling to find out uh, what the status is because they want us back to, to do the work sure. that we're doing. So yeah. uh, time will tell. It's all in the hands of the court right at this time. So. So I'm just making a note in the record that you're supportive of the project moving forward at no cost to the town and we'll evaluate it. And then you'll have to make another decision about whether to keep up that stuff, which will be- well, Can I ask a question? Kim, are you still on? Is Kim still on? Yes, I am. Sorry, I had to hit my mute button. <laughs> no, that's okay. Weren't you, didn't you complain about rodents? Um, we did. Okay. So when the grass was all grown up, we had mouse problems okay. in the in the building. Like they were in our desk drawers. They were I mean, we found mouse poop kind of everywhere. Yeah. Um, the first time the lawn was mowed last year, Jeff Holmes had somebody come do it. Or I guess it was the year before last year, I don't remember. Um okay. and that guy, whoever it was, said that there was a just a lot of, they ran over a lot of snakes and mice and, you know, whatever. We did have um, a rodent control company come and they set up, you know, rodent stations to, you know, kind of stop them from coming in the building. Um, so, so far, I don't think we've found any in the building this winter oh. that I'm aware of. Um, but I'm afraid of, you know, what will happen this summer if... Okay. We have the fields come back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll have bigger snakes to take care of the mice. That's basically <laughs> what happened. You're, you're, you're following the food chain. Is, uh, as long as they don't come in the building. That's right, That's Kim. Right. I'm with you on that we'll one. We'll put up a sign. <laughs> yeah, no snakes Please. on that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. I just remember that was an issue, Kim, so I just wanted to bring that up. Thank, thank you. <laughs> no snake, snakes are mouse on the left. Oh. So, okay. Okay. So, we're going to try the highway now. Was anybody else up there? That... So, we're going to start with the annual work for 2022. Uh, $11,000 for replacement uh, uh, six grader tires. Ooh. You got anything on that, Roland? Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 10,000, and, and they have to come to the select board for anything that's over 10,000, 10,584 for the six grader tires. And I guess that's cheaper than what I bought them for for three years ago. <laughs> so they just got to have a yes on that. It's in the reg regular budget anyway. Oh, okay. Got it. At that value? It's in there. Buddy. It's in there now. Yeah. It's so what there, happens, the, the grader has funding along with all the other heavy equipment at like 55000 a year. Right now there's funds to pay for it, but we're in March. So as long as Griggs, Griggs, I pick on Griggs because Griggs has a, a truck, plow truck that's the next one to be replaced. Uh, <laughs> that's where you cross your, you ordered it last year for what November. Yeah. When I went on the so right, record when I, today. Yeah, that was my, Mike's. Okay. <laughs> Mike. Mike. So anyway, as, today, the, as the, the time ticks by and we, we, we don't have a replacement truck, so we try to keep those trucks on the road. Gotcha. We're at the very end of its useful life as far as repairs, because the repairs start to say. Do we have a repair list for that truck? Oh, we have an itemized list, yeah. 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 So yeah. we're watching that one in particular, and then anything else to choose into that 55. So in the last, you know, in the next two and a half months, you know, three months, whatever, then you're, you're 
crossing your fingers basically that you know this is the last one and then we can trade it now the only wild card is that order that you place back in november december for our new truck because of the, the um, supply chain issues right that isn't totally confirmed that's coming in the fall so that's one of those if they if they can shorten up their lead time which i haven't heard too many people making progress on that we hoped that it comes in in july august September. That's why he ordered it so early. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we don't yeah. have a guaranteed delivery date yet. So all the salespeople can say is it's ordered. It's they said we're going to get some in such a date and some on such a date. Um, but it's not like the old days where they had them on the yard. So we're at their we're at their production win. Yeah. But the sooner we can get that off our hands and onto somebody else's, the better. But we still need a truck. <laughs> you know, we can't we can't just get rid. We could get rid of the truck. Um, early, but that we, we don't have the truck, uh, certainly for a winter storm because we need all of them, but something to think about. <laughs> so do we need a motion for? Yeah, if you could have a motion to approve the purchase of graded tires up to $11,000 for highway, then they'll figure out the best price still and try to get that. Hey, Ron. Hello. Mike. Hey, Mark. I just want to add that I was asked years ago to give you guys a heads up, which I think the only one on the select board now is is rolling when I gave the heads up that it was coming. Right. For these tires? Well, the, the greater tires come up, what, every four years now? Maybe something like that? Five years? I think it was, I think these have actually been a little over five years. Yeah. These could be actually six years, to tell you the truth, I think. I want to say six. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, that's it's one of those things where it's a large expense that comes in these chunks and uh, it always hits that $55,000 line. And if everything else is running fine, because we have newer equipment, it can go in there. If it doesn't, then the board has to decide where the money comes from. Uh, we have the highway equipment reserve that could fund that if needed, but that takes money away from Mike's replacement truck yeah, next year. Sure. So right. it's not a, it's not a perfect science, but if you, if the grader is going to sit there and spin, it's not moving dirt. Right. That's right. right. So. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the greater tires up to eleven thousand dollars. Second. I'm second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? No, he's have. Oh, okay, Brian. We got one more thing or for the highway. Maybe a couple things. Sure. <clears throat> okay, we got. Um, that Mark got a price on from Lucky's for a trailer, and we allocated um, thirty thousand for him not to spend over thirty thousand. And the bid, uh, the price of the trailer is thirty eight thousand eight hundred dollars. I guess it's up to you guys what you want to do. <clears throat> I'm going to kind of leave this up to you. I've got a feeling what I'd like to do, but. Um, if you want to prove the other 8,800, that's fine with me. Um, there is another route maybe we could think about, but uh, I just wanted to throw it out to you guys what you want to do about the trailer. What is this other? I see two invoices. There's two, tri there's two bids. Well, I see it. this one's a GVW of 5,500 pounds and the other one's a 20 pound trailer. Okay, so that doesn't mean anything. You gotta help me out on that one. So, so one's not gonna be your your twenty your twenty ton your, <laughs> your GVW is forty eight thousand. Um, your other one looks like it's a twenty five ton trailer. Hey Mark, the um, yeah, these, these are the same ones, um, but the price has gone up on them. Is that true? Well, the the one one we had from Lucky's was a single jack. Is all they had, I remember correctly, and didn't have the air ramp, so it was a totally different rig. I did talk to Rush Clark. They do get trailers in too. They can't give me a timeline on a trailer. I did inquire on, I got the price from Lucky's. I asked, I did call Rush, not even saying the price, whatever. Do you see anything adjusting in this? If I waited a year or two years, whatever. He says for the foreseeable future, no, you cannot see no pricing going down. Like what you got right now is probably gonna be the best you're gonna get. Everything's gonna go up which I can see because of COVID and everything that's going on in our world. But 
I just wanted to check to see if you could see anywhere where anything was coming down. He has trailers coming in too, and I've been in quite a few talks with him. I've talked to him again today. Do you hear anything? Can you get any timelines? There's zero timelines. He can't tell me it's going to come in in two months, next fall, next winter, or the spring. Like he can't give us any answer. So we're kind of in limbo with them on their one because I don't want to wait for two years and hire somebody to haul it around. So I don't know where to go with this one. So I got two two questions, Mark. Uh, um, this is only to move our excavator. Yeah. And um, does this trailer current exceed our needs? Is was the first question. Exceed? I don't think it. I don't think it exceeds. I think it is what we need. I don't think it is over the top. Okay. That's what you're asking. And um, uh, your your thoughts about? Uh, I know that it was mentioned that um, uh, Ken Harvey was talked to, and they said that uh, anytime we wanted to borrow theirs, it's an option for us to uh, to use theirs. Is there a benefit in using Ken Harvey's? Uh, uh, he said it would be free. Um, is there a benefit in that? And then waiting maybe for um a trailer that maybe meets our needs better i'm just curious Do we want to so the one from lucky's i don't i don't know if anything can meet our needs better than lucky's ken harvey did tell me and ken's always you know he was a hyde park man for years and years and years and years he told me that if i ever got in a bind you know we can work it out so you can come grab my trailer to move it around if you need to it wasn't hey use it every day it was you get in a bind you know, I've got a trailer, you can use it. And that's where we left it or whatever. It wasn't an everyday thing. I do know, you know, Ken has been very good to me. I have a good relationship with him. And he's always given a lot of time and lots of the town of Hyde Park as well. So he is a good man for the town. Absolutely. And, I but I don't want to be like, no, pull the plug on this and wait and find out, hey, now I need $60,000. And that's why I was kind of calling around and feeling around where are things going. And it was, you know, they're going up. You know, if you can buy it now, buy it now. Or hold off and spend another 10 grand. We, we kind of did that with the excavator itself. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know if that was, uh, uh, if that one there was one that was bid on back months ago. And now, uh, are they, uh, we bought no, it. The, the one that's the one they got coming in within a month and a half, I think it was when I talked to them. I think it was a week ago or a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, whatever. That one is everything kind of we spec, kind of like on the money to what we spec. The other one has the single jack, doesn't have the air ramps. It's a different, totally different animal. Okay. So, does the other one handle our estimator, Mark? What's that? Do you don't handle the excavator? What's what's the weight on the excavator? Keep going in and out. I can talk more. Would it be able to handle the excavator? Is that what you asked? What is the weight of our excavator? The weight of this one is. I'd have to go back and look. I don't. I can't remember it top of my head. Uh, I have it somewhere in here. What do we buy for an excavator? I was like, what is that? It's a thirty thousand. Uh, it's a long one, right? Uh, twenty-eight. 28, yeah, 28. I, I want to think like 28, I think. It's 28,000. That, that's what I remember. 28. It should handle it. What's the length on this one, Mark? This trailer? Um, Not 100%. Without going back into my email and looking at it. Okay. You got you got one is twenty one foot. Yeah, twenty one foot deck, and this one yeah. is deck length twenty four. What what what's the I've, I've got the price? Well, what what's the difference in in the air ramps? I mean, what what if, what if you didn't get the air ramps? Well, what's the cost of them? Well, the one time the guy bends over and <coughs> up those is back out, you paid for your air ramps. That's the cost of them. <laughs> I mean, there's honestly, not a lot, honestly, of, a lot of air ramps out there. Last, 
<laughs> There's not a lot of okay. air ramps out there. <clears throat> there is or isn't? There isn't a lot of air ramps out there. Um, now, yeah, actually, if you look now, in today's world, there is. Everybody's going air ramps. So nobody will go back. So, no, that's, that's wrong. No. Everybody's going air ramps. The guy that delivered it, who was a self-contractor, said he would never go back. Like, air ramps are the only way to go. Yeah, but what's the cost of the air ramps? I think it was like 7,000 difference. Well, I Which think is for $7,000, we can we can lift them up by hand. I mean, there's a lot of... So how long do you think you're going to keep this trailer? Well... I, I I think for seven thousand dollars, I'm I'm for the the regular ramps that you can throw up and down by hand. I I, I just don't. I think <clears> for <throat> how long you keep the trailer and you look at possible injuries, I think it's very cheap. Well, I don't know. I've done it for years and I ain't hurt my back yet. But that's up okay. to the other board members too. So I, we don't have to make a decision on this tonight, do we? But well, what's what's the time? Of course, uh, the salesman's saying it's got to go immediately, or it could be gone tomorrow, or whatever, right, Mark? Of course. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like this one's coming in. If you don't get this one. I don't. I don't know what you're going to do. Right? No you're going to call. Mark, what's your opinion on a tilt deck? Um, I'm not a big fan of the tilt deck. Well, you got one you want to sell us? Well, no, I just think it, that alleviates. Right. Yeah, alleviates you the to, ramps. You got the ramps. You get tilt deck. You're, it's more accessible. It's you. My, I've got multiple things myself. <clears throat> one is so many people have said if you got wet tracks, it's a hard time getting up on it. I don't want to put the machine off the side of it. Two is when the deck comes down. You know, there's some pressure coming down on the truck. I always feel. Which I may be totally wrong because they have tilt deck for a reason, but that initial when it comes down bothers me as well okay so where where we we approved thirty thousand where are we gonna get the eight uh magic wand of yours yeah the uh yeah, twenty three twenty two thousand left out of the equipment loan so that could should that yeah you initially that mark yeah yeah I was rolling, I think. Frank. No, go ahead. Uh, so there's about sixteen thousand short for that thirty-eight. That would come out of the uh, have to come out of the reserve. Out of the truck. Uh, potentially, potentially out of the truck because we have to get through this year and see where we are in October. So yeah, every dollar you take is coming out of our. Would it be better to wait towards when we get closer to the end of the fiscal year? Uh, well, usually with the reserve, you're, you're really talking about known things. So you're, you're, yeah. you're, but the unknowns, you're right. The, the closer you are to the purchase, the more confident you are in what you have for the purchase. Right now we're kind of far away. We're six to seven months away and you get two or three of these extra costs. You'll take a loan out for the truck, I guess. That's what's not preferred, not preferred. <laughs> no. So then we have to go to the, the only other thing that's happening potentially that would make up for that 16 or maybe even more is the, uh, the FEMA money reimbursement because some of that goes right to the select board's decision on what to do with it. Now, what do we, uh, when do we know about that? <laughs> when I get done playing ping pong with the FEMA people. You don't have to we we send something, yeah, we send something, they send it back. We send, so when that game stops, then they process it. So there's no guarantee on that timing at all. So I would suggest we kick this can down at least a month to find out where we are financially. And if the trailer's there, it's meant to be. That's what I'm suggesting. I'm willing to hear from other people. Hey guys, I have a question to ask. Hi, Allie. Hey, um, I was just wondering, uh, what is the possibility of purchasing a used trailer that is still in like new condition? Uh, glad you asked that question. Um, we did spend some time, I did, when I was liaison, uh, checking out different uh, used pieces of equipment. 
and a lot of them are damaged. Uh, I'm not saying all of them will be, but again, how long we um, want to wait and what's the risk of uh, uh, buying something that we have to put more money into. Um, that's what we were kind of finding out. I found everything from broken frames to uh, brakes that were worn right down to nothing. Um, and how much money do we want to put into it? Uh, there's a chance that we could find something that, uh, that is in really good shape. Uh, there was one thing that we did find, but it sold real quick, which has made me very nervous about uh, this trailer um, we have now. It could be sold pretty quick because of how fast this other one. This one gentleman was get, uh, bought the trailer, um, if I remember right, and um, he, he got out of the business. Something happened where... I don't know if it's due to COVID or whatever, but he got out of the business and he was selling his trailer in really good shape. And before we even had a chance to even act on it, it was sold. So there's other people out there in the same boat swimming around looking for uh, looking for a good deal. <coughs> so it's it's a it's a tough one. Agreed. I was just wondering if you know, like Clark's or Lucky's had you know a nice used trailer that would match Mark's needs that he's looking for, but we're not overspending on the $30,000 mark. Understood, yes. That's if we could find one, I, I would strongly support it myself. And maybe we could use this one month that if we put it off and, and see if, uh, until we find out what our financial uh, situation is, we can, we can do that. We can uh, uh, be looking into uh, uh, like, um, Craigslist and other places. Uh, I'm sure there's other heavy equipment uh, uh, places where it's marketed and uh, we can, might be able to find something. We want to try to stay in Vermont if we can without having to go too far out of state. You got a question? Have you checked with Linden and Morsel? I did, and Linden doesn't carry anything that big. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I did too. I, I like Linden a lot. Yeah. And uh, I did that. Uh, one of the first things I did went over and saw him and, and stuff. Mark, your opinion? Hey, Brian. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, so so to answer Allie's question, no, I checked with Lucky's, nothing. I've checked with Clark's, nothing for use. The this new one coming in, he, the salesman did tell me that he's had a couple of different people who are interested in it. So, in your month, two months, I don't even know if I'll be here. Uh, I did call the place in Lindenville as well myself, and nothing. There it goes, and. Cobble Hill used to deal with them. I called them and nothing. And I appreciate all those efforts that you put into trying to find that. And I know we both did there. So, uh, yeah. um, and that's where I'm kind of leaning toward. But we do need to get this financial aspect of uh, the extra uh, 16000 you said, uh, dollars uh, figured eight. out. And we just need a little bit of time. I thought it was only eight. Well, eight. Well, yeah, it was eight well, over, yeah. but we got eight eight thousand eight hundred, Brian. Yeah, it was sixteen thousand is what uh, you had originally taken the two hundred thousand on the excavator for, which still has the twenty two thousand in there. So you're talking about sixteen thousand, which was eight thousand, but sixteen thousand is where I have to find other money. So you, you hear what he said, Roland? He said he had to find sixteen thousand. Yeah, we just got to find it. We got to figure out where and yeah, the, how much we got, that type of thing. Yeah, the board already agreed to find eight, Roland. So I'm just making sure that everybody knows 16 is the new number with the $38,000. Because of the difference in the excavator versus what we borrowed. Or have. Yeah, because yeah, so the excavator price went up, right, Ron? That really um, hit us. Yeah, area. that went up by 7000 Yep. That's my fear with the trailer. If we keep putting it off, is we're going to keep going up. But that's like I said. I I, I talked to another vendor. Just asked where are we going to be. You know, if I held off a year, is it going to come down? If I can figure something out, or even hire somebody, to move it around. <coughs> he said, absolutely not. Does not see that happening in the near future. Matt, Chastity, where are you folks at? I'm at, but I don't want to keep waiting because I was completely annoyed with the waiting of the excavator and then it ended up costing us a lot more money. Understood. So <laughs> I 
can see it's going to happen. I've been talking with a guy named Jeff Newton who owns Zoom Truck and who's selling his business. So I'm cheating and texting him. <laughs> I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Matt, I can't hear you. Matt, turn that mic. <clears throat> there you go. So, so I've been trying to text with Jeff Newton, who owns a trucking company in Vermont, and he he's his exact words were, "If you wait a month, you're not going to find a trailer." Yeah. So how do we act on it? Well, you you act on it by saying you'll, you'll uh, authorize the purchase of that what thirty eight eight for the new trailer, and uh, funding is coming from the loan plus sixteen on equipment uh, heavy you know, equipment. capital reserve. Yeah. yeah. And that's the that's the motion you need to make so we can know where the money's coming from. Anybody that's my thought. I don't know if everybody agrees no, no, with me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm on board with what I mean. You guys just gave us some good. We're uh, meeting again in two weeks. Yeah. One week. Yeah. But we'll oh, we have three weeks. I think. Yeah. It depends okay. on how the calendar falls. Yeah. yeah. Second second Tuesday. Well. We won't have much better projection than we do now. Right? No, probably not. I mean, the things are really, really slow with equipment. I mean, the, the, if it's not there, it's not there. Right? So I think we ought to, uh, I'm leaning towards what uh, Chastity said and we uh, get going on it so we'll have one. Roland, anything more? The only thing I've got to add is that's up to you guys what you want to do, but for the air, it's it's um, for seven thousand dollars. You can throw them things up and down; they're not that hard. They were they're on springs. Um, that will save seven thousand dollars, and they still have a trailer for the air. But Roland, you can have over that in a workman's comp claim. That's where I'm at. Like. You'll have over that and workman's comp claim. And what did you say? <laughs> Mark and Mark. You got two guys there. You can take them if it's that heavy and put two guys on them and pick them up. But I picked them up myself many times. And I'm just thinking, you know, the town is thinking about the dollar and <clears throat> you got to think about it. The way things are going today for $7,000, I think you can pretty much have two guys there to help. <clears throat> okay. and, and gentlemen, uh, Mark, um, I want to play devil's advocate. You got an excavator, you're going to be loading on the thing. If it's that heavy, put a chain around the thing and lift it up that way with the excavator. There you go. So we'll won't deal with that trailer. We'll go find one with just regular ramps. What do you guys want? Well, it's, you know, it's seven thousand dollars you're talking about for air. It's just for how long? I, I said I'm going to leave it up to the rest of the people. I give my opinion. So on that subject of the ramps, what's the weight of the ramps? Mark, you have a weight of those ramps? No, but Rome probably does. He's lifted them up quite a bit. Yeah, I've lifted them up all by myself many times. Many What's times. the weight? I don't know, maybe 40 pounds, 45 pounds a piece. They're on springs anyway. They gotta be heavier than that, aren't they? I have no idea. Yes, sir. You got something well, I know I don't really hold any weight in this, but what I'm thinking <laughs> you might. Is, <laughs> I know, right? He's a taxpayer. Is, is with having to wait, if you wind up spending seven grand more on the trailer and you could have got it with air. <laughs> <laughs> That's Good another option. Yeah. You what do you say? <laughs> I was just saying that if you wait and you wind up spending seven thousand dollars more to get the one that you do that just has the springs, and you could have one now for the difference as a taxpayer, I'd rather you guys just got it now. <laughs> Yeah, that's so, Mark. That's not an option. That's on the, and that's the way it's going to stay, right? Right. So, so remove that. Right. So I will say that my, my both of my sons, they're nine and twelve, and both of them can lift up ramps on one of those trailers because they help Kevin at work at Percy's with the same thing. Just to throw that in there. Why is she talking? <laughs> 
So we need to have a motion um, either to, if we can purchase this one here that's being talked about, the one for $38,800. And if it gets accepted, then we, we, we go, what's that? Yeah, start. That's one way to yeah. yeah. move forward. If we, yeah. if, we, if we get that, then we uh, uh, we go ahead with it. And if we don't have it, then uh, we... Uh, Another motion, so we have another motion or we figure out how we're going to handle it. Yep. So we got four people. I wish Susan was here. <coughs> we're going to say Matt. Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to go back and ask Mark, you know, if we need the money, he's got six tires on the grader. Can he get why with four tires on the grader this year? Can we pull some money there? Hey, Matt. Matt. Yeah. Let's see where I come out my salt budget. Might give you some money there. All right. Could be. Somebody is saving you guys some money. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. you what, I got a lot of money. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to do some research here. I'm obviously coming late I know to this market. I, I totally get a convenience factor and I get the, the workman's comp factor as well because I deal with that. But I. I was trying to find a quote on Talbert because that's what I've dealt with in my experience. I, yep. I don't know if if Lucky's had a Talbert option or whatnot. But. Well, that's where you get the quote. Yeah, but well, you're you're welcome to look, and I'm welcome. I'm good to stand back and let somebody else figure it out. No, I don't want to do that at all. I, I and and I hate that it's a three week wait between meetings. That's why I. Right. Especially it is we're talking March. People are going to go to work. You're going to have and, you've got, and, you and guys the in increase, construction. Once people yeah. start really moving. They're going to realize, well, we need a new trailer. We can't go with this old one or whatever any longer. And they're going to want to jump on whatever they can find. Type of thing. And I, I do like what Mr. Foss just said. And that uh, uh, as our constituent, he was saying that uh, he would want us to pay even more down the road if we don't get this one. So can we make a motion to pass the budget with the contingency of 6,000, 7,000 in savings on salt? For the financial part of it, you mean just that, not the trailer? Because he said this, this trailer, the 38,800 one, uh, that it's not an option for those ramps. Those ramps no, on. as is. Oh, well, as is. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. If, if, he, if he can make up the money in the budget on salt. Yeah. And you'll be able to figure that out. But you you got to think, winter, winter can go, Matt, into April, seen it salting and, you know, end of April and stuff. So, you know, I don't know how much money there is and the salt left, but you're still going to, you got some winter ahead of you. Could use a lot of salt. Mm -hmm. so. And Roland is correct. <clears throat> I still got to fill my salt shed. What's that? You're correct. And I still have to fill my salt shed. You know, yeah. Well, <laughs> but I'll still come in under. Well, I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the weather is going to be. If I had a crystal ball, probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. But uh, Thank you, for you never know. Thank you. It's hard to do that. Salt Brian's working for us. We should come under for sure. Did you want to make that motion? I will. I'm at it. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve the purchase of the trailer from Lucky's. The, which one do I want to call it? The Fellings. The Fellings um, for the 38000 with 38.8 in it. 38.8. Yes, yeah. sorry, 38.8. Um, with the contingency that we find some cash in the salt budget. And 
Can well, you, you won't know that till June 30, but you can uh, you can say that the oh that the monies will come the monies yes. will come from the highway department savings and whatever wherever they can save exactly <laughs> basically because right. it's too early to wherever pay. Mark can find the money Mark to balance the budget to we'll balance. find it for you Chad <laughs> yeah that's Mark's challenge there right? we yeah. go challenge Mark to the second <laughs> I'll second it on balance the budget yeah all in favor signify by saying aye aye aye. Roland, are you abstaining or? No, I'm not. I'm not saying yes. No, I'm no. Those opposed? You're opposing? Yes. Okay. So I believe the ayes have it. Uh, three to what? one. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, I guess that's resolved. Eleven eleven <laughs> permits. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a got, minute. Got one more. Roland's okay. Got more. On the grader, Mark, you're still there, right? Yep. Okay. I don't know if the rest of the board members know this, but our grader went to Morsel and graded in Morsel for two days, I think it was, Mark. Uh, well, kind of one day with my operator and one day with their operator. Okay. My feelings are, and I want to throw this out to the rest of you board members, and I thought we talked about this once before a while ago if our pieces of equipment go out of town i would like to see our operators in the equipment but that's up to you guys to, to think about that too I agree it's not that. just just not me i don't like to see a piece of equipment go and have a, another person run our equipment i'd rather pay the person from our town time and a half or whatever it's going to take to run that greater. So Roland, I just, want to, I just want to add to that before anybody says <clears> that. <throat> so if I have an operator available, which, which we're all in the same, I, I agree with, I have borrowed a bucket loader from a surrounding town. We have borrowed a dump truck from two surrounding towns. So does that mean we're in the middle of an ice storm? I'm down two trucks. I borrow a truck. That means you no, know, my operators should come over and have you guys stay home. Or no, they I'm, have a I'm truck talking about the grader. Well, I'm talking about <clears throat> everything because we're talking about equipment. It's not just a grader. It's equipment across the line. So when we go across the line with equipment, I mean, everything to me is the same. It's a dump truck to a bucket loader to the grader to the tobacco. So that being said, so a surrounding town should tell me, no, I don't have a spare. I got a spare truck, but you can't use it in the middle of an ice storm. I know you're down two trucks, but sorry. I mean, that's my only problem is that because we have shared with surrounding towns both ways for sure. And actually, you and I started the relationship, I think, over there to helping out. Yeah. And I know well, that no, my... I can't say help or started, but. We did a pretty good job together. My my down. my feelings was way before you were in the picture. But anyway, I so don't want to wanna I, see I wanna... our two hundred some odd thousand dollar piece of equipment that greater go out of that town without our operator because I've seen some of the roads that they have to deal with where it went. So that's up to you guys. I'm just going to leave it out there. And if um, what's the, you what's say yes, that's fine. If you say no, that's fine. But it's not going to be but on the, the But the roads, roads we went, we went before to help you out, right? Right. But you, with our you, operator? you, you guys were in with your operator, right? Okay. Right. I know no, that's, that's the way other towns work a lot of it, unless it's a truck. You, were, you guys were down a plow truck. Kenny, come over. He had a plow truck of ours for two weeks. <laughs> right. More. And we had but Eden's. That's, and we, that's we kind of a bucket loaders or whatever. That's so kind of a different. Roland? Um, yeah. Matt, what were you going to say? My, my yeah. question does this, does this come with like a lease agreement or is this just handshake, Mark? Or how has this worked in the past? Just so you edu educate me. Well, we usually, it's, we've had, Roland and I work very well together. We had, and I wouldn't Talk believe into Kevin and we work well together as far as we trade off on the trucking part. So we add it up to where it's, it's good for my taxpayers, their taxpayers, whatever. 
So we all went or sand, they come help us or whatever. We usually pay it off that way. We've come to Johnson and Ice Storm. They had no trucks or they were down two trucks in the middle of a big ice storm. Had to cancel school. This is back a few years ago. Mark Lohier and I came down to help them guys out. Got school going. Our roads were good. So everybody had school. They paid us back in truck and winter sand. Usually it always washes out with hauling sand or hauling gravel to resurface the road. Mark, we have a very good mutual aid system between us with the towns. And it usually comes down to the road foreman's and we all come to a pretty good agreement that makes everybody happy in the end. Mark, what about equipment specific? What I'm saying is if we just <coughs> deal with the grader and not uh, worry about the trucks or something like that, because it is a specialty. Whenever we hire somebody for the grader, uh, we look for that specialty in that individual to uh, be able to operate it uh, effectively and efficiently uh, to get the work done. I'm wondering if and I would. Yeah, go ahead. I would assume that our surrounding towns do the same thing, and I look at who's operating it, and that's where I go. Where, yep, yeah, you can use it. You, you know, where my guy's free, we can put him in it. Now, does our insurance cover? If something was to happen with another operator that's not our employee, like would that have been? We're all the same insurance staff. We're all through Vermont City Leagues and Towns. So it's same insurance. Same thing as <laughs> more so guy running one of my dump trucks. We're all insured under the same terms. The, time, the only time that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns does not cover, whether it's operated by, it doesn't matter if it's our equipment, their equipment, operate, is only <coughs> the uh, people in charge, which would be the two road foremen generally. Uh -huh aren't following or going against select board directive. Gotcha. So as long as the board doesn't object or sets the parameters, that's fine. If Mark is told tonight, do not send that grader without an operator. And by chance he, he had to do that. He yeah. had to do something opposite of you, you know, like, or, sorry, it's better the other way. Yeah. You must send it with an operator. He s decides for some reason that he can't do that and he decides to go and send it. That potentially creates an, a directive issue. Gotcha. Okay. The so the insurance is going to want to know how did that happen? Okay. And okay. they'd go so, back to the minutes of this meeting to figure out what the board directed. Yeah. So, so based on that information that Ron just said, um, that would really limit you, Mark. Um, if we put parameters onto it in a sense. To help in any surrounding community. If the board said we strongly urge that you send our uh, own operator with it, then it's <coughs> not a directive, but it's a, uh, a feeling of uh, what the board, recommendation by the board. My feeling uh, is we hire, we hire Mark to trust him to be professional. Yeah. You know, right. I don't, I don't like But then again, if the board tells me this, you know, going against, you know, my wanting to send a grader out of town without an operator to save the taxpayers money on the overtime, I have no problem putting an operator in it. But if I do not have an operator available, more so it's in a state of emergency. People oh, could not yeah. get home. That's the key. Everybody in my town could get home. And I've got pictures of every mud hole in my town so I can show anybody who wants to argue the point that they weren't really dragging bottom. It wasn't, nobody was getting pulled out of the mud hole. The worst one we did have, and thank you to Allie Judkin for calling that one in, but that was the worst one we had in town all year. And if you look at Channel 3 News, we've been very fortunate in town of Hyde Park. Yeah, we really have been. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like helping the surrounding towns, especially in an emergency situation, which I would consider Friday was an, or third, whenever you did it, that was definitely an emergency situation. It was Friday afternoon. Well, I had to, they wanted us first thing Friday morning, and I had a couple spots that weren't total emergency, but I wanted them a little better than they were. So my guys did everything that I had on my list. Then I said, after I clear that up, I can send everything over to you guys, but not until, no, I got to make sure all my taxpayers can get home. I got to make sure I can get an ambulance and fire department to every household in Hyde Park before I go out of town. But if that's in my head that I'm good and I know they're not good, then we, I feel there's a little obligation. You got to help your surrounding towns. Like yeah. we're all together. They would help me this, and I got to help them. Yeah. This is nothing to do with helping surrounding towns. This has got to do <clears throat> with, do you want your grader to go to another town and run by another person in another town? Or do you want your grader to leave 
and be run by the operator that usually runs it. That's the way I'm going. It's up to you which way you guys want to go. It's nothing about helping the surrounding towns. I'm willing and everybody's willing to help anybody. But but Roland, if I don't have an operator available on a Sunday and they're working on a Sunday, should I say, no, it's got to sit here all day? I know you guys really need it, but I don't have an operator. I need to go with the agreement. That that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with that one. It, it, <clears> and if I have an operator, I'm good sending him. If you want me to send him, I'll send him. But if I, my operator say, I I can't do it, I have to go to a funeral. So we're going to say that, sorry, nobody can help you out because we got a guy who's got to go to a funeral for a family member. And that's actually kind of what happened this last this last. <clears throat> I feel like we can make the recommendation that Mark, we trust and you use your own, you use your judgment as you have been. And it, when you can always send our guys in the machinery, trucks, equipment, greater, whatever. Well, the trucks are going to be kind but, of hard, Chastity. The trucks, they're a dime a dozen. I disagree you know. with you. Well, I the greater I find money to buy one. I don't think they're a diamond dozen. <laughs> they, they're 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 a lot. It's I, just, I'll tell you what, Roland. I I, I got fifty five employees, and you can pull a clutch out of a truck just as quick as you can pull. But well, I'm not, I'm saying, but most of them are automatics now anyway. For these guys, it's it's a lot. Um, well, I feel okay. Let me finish. I feel like. Mark has been using his judgment all these years to help the surrounding towns. And I feel if you continue to use your <coughs> judgment, Mark, we trust you in that. And you're not just going to let some Joe Schmo drive our grader. Um, and just every, if that does happen again, just try really hard that it is our operator running it. I would say yeah. advised by advised by the select board that a qualified operator is in the position. Yes. Period. I mean, because I don't want to get into this. Mark brings it up. We got we got we got a loader. We need a loader. So you know what? You can screw up a loader. Whether someone wants to believe it or not, you can. I've seen it. I deal with it every day. But I don't want to get into the point where we're telling Marshall to piss up a rope. And when we need a loader, we need a loader. I mean. We are a small community. They're a small community. It's an emergency situation. I don't think we're, we're what, what are we talking? Five times a year, Mark? No, not five times. I'm talking a couple times a year. Honestly, a couple times a year. It's nothing. No. It and comes, well, I say that. I say that. You got, got 30,000 no. 30, people paying taxes to this. You know, we, we got we to gotta pay the right respects to the town payers. That's what it comes down yep. to. We, yep. We keep them in the forethought of this and, and obviously. So whenever, so talking about taxpayer, like fires, like our taxpayers. So when we do that and Roland about for this, it's been a very fair back and forth. When Roland was foreman of Morseville, it was very fair to us that we got the truck in for us. Like it always washes out and it really comes back to be pretty good. We, it's a good deal between all the towns we ever dealt with from Johnson to Eden and Morseville. We've always, so the foremans, we all get together, we make the kind of the deal, and it always comes back to where we have trucks hauling our sand in and whatever to help us out. It's always been a very good deal. Nobody's losing in the end, usually. Practice has been the practice, and, practice. and minutes say that you support Mark's yeah. judgment. And yeah. That's okay. kind of how we'll sit. Moving on. <laughs> so moving on. Okay. Um, let's see, 11 permits to be reviewed and approved by road foreman, town administrator, unless referred to liaison or select board for review. Action item. Hey, so, Brian. Oh, yes, sir. I keep, for some reason my phone keeps muting on this thing tonight, but I don't know what the outcome of that was. Okay. Keep doing what you're doing. So, so, so the outcome was that, uh, um, we're going to trust your judgment. And that you're going to, uh, um, if it goes out of town, it goes to uh, the person that operates as a qualified operator. Okay, thank you. 
And Brian? Yes, sir. Whenever I can put my operator in it, offer that first, correct? That's correct, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, back to 11 11 for me. <laughs> that was a good summary, though. I gotta you were waiting for another opportunity. For <laughs> Okay, so 11 love birds. Uh, we started uh, with the normal process of a highway liaison being responsible for issuing the 11 11 permits after Mark and I kind of hash out. So, Roland and I had a conversation along with Mark, uh, which is more of a, I guess it's a little streamlining of that process a little bit, where Roland was feeling like 70%, that's my number, but most of the permits come in are pretty straight and narrow, you know, you're coming in at a good sight line, your driveway drops from the road. We have standard conditions, we apply the permit. People move on, I think Matt had one of those. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't remember yours being that difficult at Center Road. But. Yeah. So, and there's other ones that are way more complicated. We had one on Brook Road where somebody was trying to push uh, away from an expensive site uh, and the board had them through the 11-11 process had them put them to the more expensive site because sight line was restrictive on uh, the future driveway so in those cases where it's a little more difficult or policy or costs go up or whatever um, that's where we end up going a little bit slower meeting with the landlord our landowner come up with a plan of action and trying to make sure that we're operating for the long-term life of that <coughs> not necessarily the short-term cost of building the driveway so the, the modification that we would have is that on those 70 percent plus or minus Mark would go out, I'd, I'd deal with the applicant first, get the site plan together, get the fee, get the permit, send that stuff to Mark French. He would schedule time to visit the site. Landowner's supposed to have it flagged, but sometimes they don't. Yeah. Mark will come up with a no issues, issues kind of opinion. Maybe I'll, I can go out uh, looking at more of the policy issues, but eventually we come up with a recommendation. Um, and in the past, we would say, hey, Brian, and last year when he was the leader, uh, We've looked at this, we need, we need to look at this close. And Brian would say, okay, let's go meet with the landowner. Let's go look at a site visit, whatever. And we come up with a resolution. And then I would write up the conditions and Brian would either digitally sign it or sign the application would be done. The modification we're thinking about is to have me authorize for those 70%, have Roland get kicked in at the 30% where we need to go on a site and kind of, it's, they're, they're obviously more restrictive ones that create cost for the landowner that we want to go a little bit slower to make sure we're doing it. But on those 70%, we could pretty much return that application to the landowner within a couple of days. Oh. Because if Mark has, he's on the road when I email him the application, he's like, yeah, I'm here right now. There's nothing wrong with that. I could just go ahead and process the paperwork to get it back to the landlord, landowner. And my, my experience with that is just exactly what they're saying. Most of them were just straightforward, yeah. but there were a select few. And then um, if they just want to bring Roland in on that one, then I think that'll work myself. That's okay. been my experience in, in doing them. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, any, any, anytime when somebody's that close, they're really getting ready for build. They, right. Any Every day that goes by, they're getting more and more anxious. Been there. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all about improving something. <laughs> So anytime we can, anytime growth, we see, the growth in our town is good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I went to we can see a little bit of tweaks. Yeah. Any little tweaks that we can make. There's one of them where those people will be like, okay, I'm, that's because they have a big list to go. Sure. Through. My condition yeah. was I needed to add and pay for a school bus stop. I remember. Well, that's a bad corner. I paid for the. I, I don't know. There's the least help. <laughs> Did you pay? Yeah, I think so. That's my, it was part of my permit. That's on Mark. Tell Mark. Hey, Mark. <laughs> You're not getting your yeah, trailer unless you can sign on. Hey, so I'm going to make a motion that Ron is going to approve that said 70% of the permits that come in that are really easy on the 1111 permits. These are no denial, right? No, Ron, right. Ron no, makes issues. no denials. No, yep. no issues. These are approval only. And the rest will go to the highway liaison and Mark for. That final approval? Yeah, I think it's the additional review. So I'm going to yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the ones that will be policy checked, fee paid, application okay. signed. 
yeah. level, you know, those very specific things. If those are all checked, the applicant can really do a lot on their own too by giving me those rather than go back and forth, which happens a lot of times. Yeah. You forgot, you know, your site plan is just a hand drawn sky. I cannot tell what you do. Right. Yeah. So I've gone to people trying to put um, mm -hmm. their a Sharpie on an aerial photo yeah. because people can usually relate to the aerial mm -hmm. photo. And then I could pull the technical so many feet from them. So, sure. Okay. So we're trying to work both ends of this together, but yeah. So it's the. Okay. It's the um, Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? No, I just have it. That's why we need another man down there, Dieway Department. So Mark can get out and do those permits. Well, relieve him up some. Yeah, that's supposed to be talked about this fall. Yes, this fall, or last fall. No, a lot the, this fall. We pushed it till October. We yeah. pushed it till this yeah. year. Yeah. We couldn't. Roland, we couldn't I still do, agree, one hundred percent. Well, we couldn't do both of them. We had to do one at a time. Yeah. I know. I do agree, one hundred percent. Okay, so that went in. Okay. What's class? What are we paving? Centerville Road? Okay. Uh, class 2 Road Paving Grant Application Center Road. Do you want 415.22? Centerville? That's Center, been paved? Centerville Road. See that little sketch? It says in your packets. It's a uh, little sketch. No sketch. So Centerville Road was Oops. done up north from Noise Farm Road oh, to a certain point. Yes. And then it stopped. And now the sort of the S curves, if you will, before you get to North High Park Road. And then Ooh. Mark, when you I got it. You have pavement that goes to like uh Orchard Farm, maybe whatever that road is, I think. Um uh, there's Yeah, just past just past Mead Road, it stops. Up yes. probably say just say 70, 80 feet. So then you have two subdivision roads past that on the right. Yep. There's Orchard and there's yep. Mountain. Yeah. What States. do you what do you think about getting up to Mountain and States intersection with those? Because they 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 weren't built out for a long time. I think they're almost what built think, out. But... What do you think about getting up the center road? Yeah. So the the difference is <laughs> the difference is about a tenth of a mile longer and nine tenths of a mile. <laughs> <You're right. longer. laughs> no, no, it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be bad to get. Uh, I wouldn't say it'd be bad to go up a little bit further. Yeah, I just was looking at the map, and I'm like, there's there's almost 13 homes in that mountain of states where yeah. there's probably yeah. four or five for 20 years. My, my only my only thing, Ron, is is looking at myself and turning around. I don't like turning around in a private driveway or a private road with town equipment. I'd rather – so right now where we stop, I turn around Mead Road, which is my road. I feel comfortable with that. I don't want to – for myself, it was my driveway. I don't want the town equipment to turn around my driveway every time they came up to plow. Yeah. So, so you, I go off from my turnaround and work my back around, not interfere with just say, if I had to turn around, I'm just going to throw it out there and throw Roland Bowie under the bus. Roland Bowie is my last driveway. So I'm packing the snow. He does it with a snowblower. Now I just messed him up. You know, I don't, I have a hard time with that. So I got to have a turnaround. So if we go up much further, we really don't have that where we're at. Yeah, well, you'd have a 20 or 30 foot need for a uh, extension of your right of way down Mountain Estates Drive. Right. And then you pave the whole then you pave the whole thing as part of your turnaround. Okay. That's why that's what I heard you say. I didn't hear you didn't want to do it. I heard you said you wanted a good turnaround that the town maintains and has the town rights to it, I guess. Right. Yeah. Do uh, we stop at the pavement? Is that the reason for that? Yeah, we stopped before, then the rest of that hill's all gravel and uh, different paving. Truck. It is for the it's it, the type of truck that would go up there and turn around for the paving is different than the gravel truck. So we kind of have to have a turnaround usually at the change of pavement. I was just thinking because it's not a very aggressive terrain through there, that truck could turn around at Center Road at the intersection if it goes all the way up. Yeah, no, that, that was Martin, that was the $120,000 question to go that other 0.9. <laughs> so it's pretty expensive stuff but yeah eventually that is the only uh gravel class two 
this uh, that hill. I'm I would like to see in the future that we connect that to Center Road and also connect from Cleveland Corners to Garfield Road, but not until we get to the point where we have a budget where we can maintain what we have for asphalt and not add more asphalt so we can maintain what we have. So we're not there yet. Yeah. All right. So those are just future future discussions, I guess. But Right. So the immediate question, this was just a minor, you know, 20 or 40 foot type of question, but the, the main issue is do you want to apply for the class two paving grant for those segments, which is Centerville and then North on North High Park to Benson? I think so. Um, highly unlikely that we'll get it. The state is notorious for doing a five to seven year rotation. We got grants money last year. Let's hope there's some system so where they right, a lot of that, generous. They have a new federal transportation budget that might throw more construction money out there. Whether it gets to the class two paving, I don't know. But if What's the match? 15%? Uh, just, just 80 20. So if there happens to be extra money and we happen to have an application in, we're in, Which we're in the good. Yeah best position so but i just want i always check with the board to make sure there's not some other section of road that people are like you're missing this part we talked about this last year and how come we didn't so we mark and i couldn't think of any other sections and because of the lack of money we've had this piecemeal segments of road. We said, oh we're going to do north height park road you know three years later we finally cover the whole thing because it's so long yeah. same thing with centerville road so we need a motion for ron to apply for that grant uh, no, for, I can apply with the consensus of the board and, and then we'll have an award at some point. Uh, you can authorize me to sign. Yeah, if you do authorize me to sign the grant application, that, there might be something I have to sign. So we could just do that. And, and, okay. Yeah, so that'd be good. Anybody want to authorize? Yeah. Right. I will move to have Ron authorized to sign and start the grant application for Center Railroad. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody oppose? No, he's had it. Good. Okay, what do we got left? Uh, everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? Yep. For, uh, Good job, Ron. Two, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good any, any questions on that, on the minutes? I'll need a motion to accept the minutes for 3 7 22. So moved. And a second. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as written, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody oppose? Aye. 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 Good. Um, now, let's see, other business and notices. Yeah, so town orders and uh, uh, a notice, I guess. I think Brian sent the digital version of that around, which is the nomination for the Guyan Valley Hall for National Register of Historic Places. He did. He came in and I saw it and yep. forwarded it. That's yes. Just, that's the paper that's moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think we're objecting to that for any reason. I haven't, I don't remember any conversation about rejecting to that. It does add uh, eligibility for other grants. Okay, yeah. so the benefit is to, to yes. preserve grant money. Yeah, exactly. they, they, it's sort of like yeah. in, in the details you'll see, uh, uh, nomination for historic registered places doesn't come with many conditions until you take our money. Okay. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, will this, That's basically what they said. Will, will, this affect, will this affect their what they're looking for no, that's exactly. any any designation actually elevates your grant applications a little bit. Okay. No matter which program you're under. Yeah. Yeah, they'll put a priority on it if it actually gets nominated and approved. The only other building we have is the courthouse on Main Street. That's the only other Hyde Park building that's on the register. Which one? Courthouse. Oh, the courthouse. Yep. Okay. Do we want to do the warrant? Yes. Okay. Two piles. Two piles. Well, this one here. Two piles. Two wood. Be careful when I grab it. I think this one for this too. Red folder is all one thing. Yeah. The red folder? Underneath. Your, uh, how about the pile of papers on it? Okay. This. Right, and this is one. And then, okay, I guess. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so that's the one that's. Get your. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it was right here. It was like, it's so... I knew what you were thinking. To let the over there. Uh, uh, so the ref, just... You, this is your first time with uh, these. Roland, if you want to participate in this, you could uh, come in tomorrow and okay. Kim needs your oh, signature on another thing. Uh, but the warrants that we're reviewing were emailed to you, except for a couple that we added tonight. You look at it. And then we also need... We also need your signature on a pile of older ones that have partial signatures to catch up on. So tonight we're going to be voting on really two things. One is the red folder, which are your current orders for tonight. And one is the other pile that Chastity started. <coughs> the other pile has the same sign here tabs on it. So if you get to it, you see your signature, that means you signed it. If you don't, you can sign it again. Uh, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow, but I can probably make it another day this week. Yeah, no, that's good. Just let Kim know when you're going to come by and she'll have them ready for you. She needs you on those liquor licenses. Yeah, okay. Okay. So we need a motion to accept them? Yeah, I would do this the tonight's. Do you want to do the dollar them. amount or not? Yep, yep, yep. And yep. the other ones are just to sign the old orders. Uh, so so present. we need a motion or, or I have a motion to accept these warrants here for the sum of Fifty thousand three hundred and forty-four dollars and forty-one cents. So moved. And the second. I'm not educated on that, but I second it. Okay. Yeah, this works. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Those, we'll walk you in a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Signing it. Hey. Aye. aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? Okay. Signature. So that was tonight's uh, warrant. So each meeting, probably each meeting, you'll have a pile that looks like that red folder. Okay. On the top is a warrant, which is a, a signature sheet for the board, but it has every check that's going to go out. Okay. So if, it, if there's something that we see that we have, then we discuss it. Exactly. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get to see these sooner so we can review them and then we'll have to look at them right here at the board. We can review them and then we'll put these together. That's right. Who puts it together? The finance. The finance, finance. 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 manager yeah. yeah. will. Yeah. We don't have right now. Right. I'm, so, okay. I'm so, still following. So, so I'm going to send this down here. Yeah. And it's yeah. got the signature, but the, all the other supporting documents are in there for the board. Yeah. So, yeah, Kim and I went through and we've been going through the finance office to pull it together. Uh, you know, every time we look, we find maybe another set of invoices that was missed or whatever. So it's still, I would say we're. I, I want to say that we're 95% good, um, but we haven't gone through all the piles yet. So it would pro probably will be done in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Uh, but the normal routine will be on your Tuesday night meetings, you'll get that folder and it'll say sign here. On Friday is the goal, maybe on Monday, we're not, I'm not quite sure with the Tuesday meeting yet, but I know I added a bunch of invoices yesterday and today, right? That came in that you're meeting on Tuesday night. Why not add them? Yeah. So I, I'm, I haven't really figured this out yet, but on Friday, we could post what I have on Friday. So you'll get through 90% oh. of the invoices that you'll see. Yeah. But what you actually see on Tuesday may have five or six more added. Gotcha. So that we don't lose another two weeks waiting for your next meeting. Exactly. I'm playing with that idea. Yeah. But ideally, on Monday meetings, we were posting on Friday and you wouldn't see anything new on Monday night. But having two full days of mail before your meeting it sort of invites us to say, let's just add it. And that's sort of what happens. It, and it, yeah, it gets the process, keeps the process moving. Yeah, yeah. It's, it takes a little time and you have to be a little orderly about it. But I think you can. I think now, these can, are August 21 war here. We just yeah. got to sign the Yeah, Kim, Kim found a bunch of stuff in the folders that yeah. had less than the quorum majority. So now, this one here. Yeah, look where the yeah, I see where it says, Brian, please sign here, but um, there's another spot here. I don't know if Chastity could sign that. Did you sign already, Brian? I signed it right here. Oh. And there's another one right on below. Yeah, yeah once, you, once you have the three or more, then you can be Yeah, because that one had Brian's signature. Brian? There, Ron. Yeah, go ahead. There are a few that require Brian's signature only. The rest of them that have the little colored tags that say sign here needs the full board to sign. Okay, that's what Brian was going over. Okay, so anything yeah. Brian sign, anything that has the sign here. Now, what about the one that says Susan, please <clears throat> sign? 
And the ones that say Susan, the reason Susan is signing those is because it was when she was chair of the board and authorized to sign the payroll warrants as, you know, as the one board member to get people paid. Okay. And those were missed. Okay, very good. I think, I think Brian's got it. <laughs> so the ones that have Susan doesn't need to have me. No, Susan will do what she gets back. Yeah, I just wanted yep. to clarify. Yep. And this one right here signed here. What, what, what's the $11,000 for? Isn't that for the... 11000 is for the... The mural thing, right? No, who's the vendor? The Vermont Electric... Uh, Vermont Memorial County... VLT... VLCT Pacific. Oh, that's the time insurance. Oh. That's for the year? That's for the quarter. Cool. It's about 40, 40 to 45,000. Okay, yeah, that's where it's at. You know, like me. Oh. One of our bigger bills we have is insurance. Yeah. So Kim was just explaining anywhere it says sign here, everybody sign. Yep. It has a blue tag with a name, that's what it's for. Uniforms, that's all the guys in the yard. That's yeah. yeah, there's five uniform sets in the winter and four in the summer. Uh, we are having a debate internally about the cost of uh, Sintas, which is our uniform company. It's a lot. It is wicked expensive. So, like, I, I, ours is fifteen dollars a week per person through uniforms. Yeah, yeah. Now we've had I think we've had G and K. We have uniform because they change up yeah. a little bit. I think there's only two vendors now. I think it's Unifirst. Unifirst, yeah. See, these guys, right? Yep. So I think, I almost feel like it's a, the car insurance world. Yeah, yeah. Play and one you and switch, then. and then the other, they go up, and then you get a deal from, so we, we might be in time for switching, because right. we cannot afford the 200 that's something a week. That's a week. Yeah, see, ours is $15 per person per week, and that's 11 uniforms yeah. each. So that's, yeah. So it's half, way, way it's cheaper. Half of pay. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Ron, is the higher cost because we are outside of the contract? That's what used to happen to um, Unifirst. Literally, the minute our contract expired, the price is practically doubled. Yeah, well, we had we have two things going on. One is the uh, the highway guys aren't 100% confident that some of the replacement items are valid. So what happens is we send the uniform away. If, uni if um, Sintas thinks that we damaged the piece, somehow, let's say a, a torn sleeve, they'll replace it and charge us for the new one at 60 bucks. So all of a sudden your, you know, $120 weekly bill is 180. Right. Got it. Um, what we did last year, because they were taking, I don't know what it was, 40 or $50 a week in insurance to pay for those things, whether we tore anything or not, it was covered by insurance, yep. yeah, which gives you a stable weekly Perfect. cost. But we weren't tearing it. There was no, there, right. it was, as soon as we got rid of the insurance last year, they started. every little tear, I think, this is my assumption, is that they're just replacing stuff and getting that 50 bucks or more back that way. So who makes the decision on saying, hey, this is a lot cheaper? Is that uh, something we can yeah. push on? Well, we, yeah, we have a contract with Sintest that we'll have to review. And then uh, Mark, I think, I don't know if he's still online, but he can put a replacement order on the piece of the uniform. Yeah. Yes. Did Mark can put up? a tag on the piece of uniform and say, please replace <coughs> because it's all so torn this and done with it. Yeah, this all has to have it's the ones that they background. automatically do that. So all this? All, all that, yeah. Perfect. Just so we're aware. Okay. We don't have to upset anybody. Exactly. Yet. Doing such a good job of getting it all organized. So that that was on the finance director's table. The room. fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes a little bit okay. of time to get into it. So these, this is payroll. Okay. So you don't sign where the blues so are. Wrong. You only just, sign where I the yellows are. Okay. And you'll see here, it's library. But it, just sign anywhere um, down in here. I mean, and you can look through everything. Susan's the only one that has to sign for the, uh, for so the yeah. payroll. So maybe maybe I didn't lift up the next page. Not maybe they just put the tab yeah. on the wrong one. Yeah, there's nothing to sign. This is this is monthly. I'll just look through. We get this month at all. Person. Well, not usually. It's probably what it is. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to make it's because it's so behind. Week. So, but no, we'll start getting them every two weeks. Just got that one. I don't think there's any more in here that needs to be signed. I'm we'll just start working on this one, but I don't want to mess them up. How come one is so much less than the others? How come what? How come one of our employees 
Thanks. January, March? Go ask Ron. Yeah, I'll ask. I'll, I'll. Okay. Now, these January weren't. Matt. It wasn't around then. Oh, Boom. shit. Right. But. Okay. For simplicity, it doesn't. Okay. The okay. symmetry that has That's true. Later, it doesn't. I'm looking okay. at August of 21. Mm -hmm. he's, like, he's learning right now, so it's hard to piece together yeah. this history, but um, I think. He, he was know, attacked here. Like, true. When, when Roland comes in, he'll finish up the uh, sign. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Kim, are you there? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking sleeping. at the um, uh, posting register report for payroll from March 9th. So do I not sign uh, It does have a sign line. here thing no, here. No, we because we need it, so. Okay. Uh, for the board members to sign. And then on one of the time cards, it had a second sign here thing, sign all. But I think the tab is, I don't see any other place in this March 9th for the select board to sign, so. Maybe the tag just accidentally got pulled from a, from a different page and yeah, shift. I think so, because I, I don't, I, I'm keeping There's definitely this bound because that one's going to go on top of this, this bound payroll so thing that you put together for March 9th it has only one signature page. So <laughs> I'm going to call it an extra tab, I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you may find a missing side signature page that we can catch up with it later. Okay. 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 So that one's all set. We'll yep. put that one on that? top. And this is just like yeah, where it was. Pass it down the line. Yeah, where it was. Yeah. Now this is the other pet in what's this for you know. What? I did. Oh, this is. Why don't you want from, I don't okay. know. I don't like signing this stuff. Well, what, who? I just pulled open the report for the select board members, and there's four members on it. And, and I'm not, not listed, but I got paid. So I must but be in a different run. But, but, the, but yeah, those there are supposed to be just where you, the board's supposed to sign on a smaller tab, right? That's what he's doing. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but so you got Susan Bartlett, Roland Bowman, Dave, Brian Jackett. And not me. No chastity payment. Did and I, I miss think that came, Maybe you were doing it on on screen. On uh, no, no, no. This is payment. Like this is your. This is the W seven. This is the yeah. The, the financials behind it. Well, she didn't earn it. I mean, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I realized what you were saying, and that's what I. <laughs> I know I got my check. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it could, be, it could be out of order. I don't know. I know. I feel it's got to be. You got your check. I'm pretty sure I did. Is this good to go now? Yes. Matt's yes, getting all serious, serious over there. Hey, okay. I, you know, my name is mean something. It does. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh does it? <laughs> Someday you guys are gonna be Somebody's gonna come in and get this piece of paper and want it just for my signature. Um. So all these here go with that order. I didn't see anything. Okay, that's time. Let's go. Okay. Well, this is keep it together. December 21. Okay. Okay, where does this go? Susan, this one. This one here. Don't be messing it up. Glad you guys got me to sign up for this. <laughs> it's the hardest part is the orders. Everything else is just fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you could have walked here back by, by now and signed these. He's sleeping. What was that? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want me around you tonight. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sick. <clears throat> Do you want me to get these back to you, Ron, or are we just piling them up? I'll grab them on the way out. Okay, it's just too much. What do you got, an hour drive home? Depends on how fast. I've got 45 to 55, somewhere in there. I'm bidding on a job over your way right now. It's going to be a nasty job. Okay. Picked up the dirt, the yeah. water berry all the way. Over Those all go oh. together in that rubber band when you're done. That will keep you busy. Oh, oh, just that. Yeah, I messed with the bill. Oh, no. oh, oh okay. I started oh, okay. to do that. Really? That's what I was at. I was like, oh, Jeez. great. A lot of other I saw these other tabs. I'm like, oh. Everything matched up. Oh, yeah. So this, like this oh, one right here, already has four signatures right. on it. It's prior to my time. Do I still sign it? It's your optional. You can initial it saying that you you reviewed it. 
just that kind of thing. But um, more more signatures than less is always yeah. better. This is the big one. Couple little last items, I think, on the agenda. Yeah, do we need, uh, as far as the other business, or do you want to go into executive session? Too? Yeah, I I don't know. I think I can do, I think I can talk about these and open these two. Okay. Part. I think okay. I can, because yeah. we're, we're, we're not quite ready for any real decision. We okay. do need to check into the board. Yep. The public may be interested in all this stuff, too. I'm going to keep that on top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you make a call again from yeah. um, CBS or somebody. I prefer live interviews. Fox News. <laughs> Where is this going to go? That's the personnel policy. We removed that. I want to look at this here with those. Um, now, she called me again. Um, and like I said, she apologized for her shortness, I guess, this morning when I was on the phone. But. Um, She's willing to try to come up with some sort of solution. Ah, okay. with that. So maybe this is it here. No, it's just more information. Yeah. So on the second set of older warrants and uh, orders, do we have a separate motion? I got the one on the 50,000. And so we need to have a motion to accept the warrants that we just signed, uh, the older ones accepting them. So moved. You have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? No <laughs> one. Hi. No. No. <laughs> I'm not abstaining. You should abstain. Right? You can abstain. Yeah. You, you can, yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you, Roland. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're wrapping things up here, then we're gonna discuss these other subjects and where we're at with them. I know something about something. Yeah, we have two um, ongoing. One is Michael Bartlett on um, uh, Route 100 up in North High Park. The town attorney was asked from the last meeting to prepare a quick claim deed and a mortgage, and he's done that. It includes $10,000 yep. to be paid when the property transfers down the road. Uh, next step is for the board to say carry on with that, and Brian and I, are, we're thinking of go meeting with Michael just to see if he's wanting to, to do this. It would re I, the goal is April, well, March 31st, to get the new quick claim deed, yep. which uh, Brian needs authorization to sign today. Okay. And if Michael signs the mortgage deed, and then we'll record it all here yeah. by the 31st, and the taxable property starts on July 1st for the next tax year, and hopefully he's gotten the services or connections that he needs to make it all work this time around. That's the goal. So we need a motion Thanks. to authorize me to uh, sign the quick claim deed? Quick claim deed. Yep. I know. Just use deed. Deed. Deed, deed. To get deed. The deed to give deed. Michael Bartlett his uh, house and uh, property back. Return the deed. To sign it. Okay. Yep. So moved. Okay. Anybody got a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Great. Tend to all warmed up. So, so when this does, okay, he, he decides he pays it back next year or the year after. That money goes to the town. We're going to, like, I'm very ignorant, obviously, question, but the money goes to our general funds at that point? It goes to repay well, those. Yeah, there's debt. The 10000 is debt that he's accrued over time. Lawyer you know, fees. Correct. So that would go back to the unassigned general fund balance, which is really the savings account if it's in prior years. Right. If it's in a current year, we could deduct those, if, you know, expenses like a reimbursement type thing. If he pays it back, if he doesn't pay it back, that ten thousand is going to go way out past current mm -hmm. expense, and we'll have to um, have that go right to the unassigned unassigned funds that don't have a home to offset expense. 
will stay in the savings account or rainy day fund. The town has a, po a policy of trying to keep 20% of annual taxes in that unassigned fund balance for emergency purposes. If you decide, which we've, voters have done two or three times lately, including this past town meeting day, with the 75,000 mm -hmm. to go from the unassigned to the highway capital reserve, yep. that's how you're supposed to get access to that money while keeping your 20% reserve. So if we get, for example, if we get FEMA back at 150,000, there's no expenses from 2019, that, but the money was taken from that unassigned we could refund that all to the unassigned to build that 20%, maybe a 23% or something. Mm -hmm. Next town meeting, the policy that you have for the unassigned fund balance is to keep it below 20. So you'd go to the voters and say, Ooh, we've got too much money by policy. We want to have your approval to spend 50,000 on ball fields. So that's how that whole thing works. And like I said, if we have the current year expenses to be offset by that unplanned revenue for some reason, it could be just an insurance claim that comes through to pay for the guardrail that was damaged, we'd offset the guardrail expense. Yeah. 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 But if we close the year and we get the money next year and we don't have a spot for it, it goes into the revenue as unassigned and it's supposed to be used by voter approval. That's the goal. Or tax reduction, which we do through the budget. So two or three years ago, we had money in two or three annual budgets to help with the tax rate, and you'd actually budget the use of 30,000 of the other side to help them. lower the tax rate. That's another use for that extra money, because sometimes it's taxpayer dollars. You give back to the taxpayers by putting it in to reduce tax rate. So, so that's everybody benefits. Yeah, that's kind of the two uses. It's it's but not it, it's not really a good idea to have more than twenty percent hanging out because that is that's tax nice. dollars that should be spent to return. Used to use the return. Yeah. yeah. So the last item is the Menash uh, purchase sale agreement. Same thing. The town yeah. attorneys drafted a, a different purchase and sale agreement that would be uh, next presented to Howard yeah. as soon as we can if the board wants to carry on with that process and see what he says. We don't have an attorney contact for him yet, but that's was Howard's. Howard was thing. supposed to be working on that to get it, but it wouldn't hurt to have a so, conversation with him to. Yeah, so somebody, Brian could go just drive over and say, hey, we got stuff for the town attorney. Here's here's the deal and yep. we have attorney yet? Yeah. <laughs> but I think Howard likes to say But you don't need to have him, just sign here. Yeah, exactly. Can he might. That, <laughs> nice, but no. I don't yeah. think, I, I, I think, he, I think he said he wanted to find an attorney. I think that's why I remember. So some people would do that. So, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's the next some step. If, if, Brian, if Brian wants to uh, present that, then that could be a job just to go over and meet with him again. I think he likes to meet at his office and talk face to face. Yeah. He so, does. Yeah. So I can get a package together basically to hand him if you want to take some time and buzz over there some more in the afternoon. Yep. I'd like to try to, I don't know if we can meet with Michael Bartlett tomorrow, but that was kind of on my potential list or Thursday maybe. Tomorrow's a long day. I'm gonna be at work at 6.30 and go no, until no, 4.30, so I don't know. If it, uh, what do you got, do you anything in the afternoon if you're doing? <laughs> I wonder if there's something we can go in between. Yeah, tomorrow I'll be here all day. Thursday, I think we're... Thursday would be better. <laughs> So if I got here by four, we could run up or right up three thirty ish. Yeah. yeah, four is probably fine. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm chastity nope. about the meeting. <laughs> so you guys, you guys run to my oh. Bartlett's at four. So you're gonna call him first. You like set that up. Or... I would assume it. Yeah, I have a cell phone number, which sometimes if he runs out of his minutes, we yeah. have to go visit him anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. And I, I didn't realize until. Is he aware of the situation? Yeah. He's aware that he um, is doesn't have any rent, he doesn't have a lease, he doesn't own the property, but he's living there. He knows that much. Okay. And he also was served with eviction notice in November. So we have that. So home. this will be another new surprise then that, hey, we're going to. One or the other. This is an option, this is an option. You know, yeah, we only have two options. Yeah. So carry through with the eviction, which is already ready to go. Or, or mortgage back. Or have a mortgage the expenses, because yeah. either, either one of them is his, yeah. his situation, he's got to get himself out of at some point. Uh, and the other the other option is to wipe it clean, but that doesn't seem 
fair to everybody else. Either. That's where I, and that's where I was at last meeting. Yeah. I, I was it, not it would set a precedence to yeah. the yeah. others. So. Yeah, and that's not, we, we don't do that for the Dunstan taxes, you know, yeah. can't pass her policy. There's a waiver of taxes. Right. It's come up with a payment plan. Right. So I think that's where we're at with all of this yeah. stuff. It's just yeah. like, if you're in this situation, you need to get through your situation. We gave you two years yeah. of not adding on to the expenses. Yeah. That 10,000 is old. That's more than half of it's old stuff. Only the 5,000 is what I'm trying to manage as a count for the last two years. So on the minutes, if uh, I don't, I don't think we need anything in the personal sale agreement at this point. Right. It's not signed by us. It's, exactly. It's just trying to come up with a draft that both can sign at some point. So it's really just yeah. delivering it. I wanted to make everybody aware of too that uh, um, when I was envisioning that spot up there in Garfield, uh, 25 acres, I was envisioning that the uh, um, that whole field all the way over to uh, the um, Davis mm -hmm. residence was the the property. And it's no. not. No. It's it's back half about way. about half of that mm -hmm. in there, and then. Uh, uh, Roland and I got talking about um, uh, the pit that the town of Morrisville has and uh, how far uh, setbacks they have to be away from the edge of the properties and roads. And just to keep in mind that uh, you've got residents and road all the way around that. So two sides are public uh, road. We'd have to stay back on that if it was used for a gravel pit. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Davis side um in there um if that ever became available it'd probably be a great addition to the uh, the current property if we're going to use it for gravel but when you narrow it down it doesn't give us much in that if you look at it uh, uh roland yeah um how far were the setbacks on the one from morrisville <laughs> long ways and and the biggest thing is the is the water water drinking water yeah. there's houses there's houses right around there and and then the, the one that uh howard the property the 1.2 acres i keep coming to my mind that howard wants for his granddaughter uh one reason is because there's a well right there on that property from the prior owner that was there and um and so again there's water there there's water um uh, where bessie uh Perlin was, was lived right on the corner. And then uh, um, I'm not sure of any other waters close by, but all those things are part of the factor of so on the, how it gets used. On the agenda, we talked, there's the high rolling seeds would like to rent, lease that from us. Yeah. So are, are we agreeing to that? Like, Matt, I can't hear you again. Sorry. The high mowing seeds, the 25 acres, high mowing seeds has requested for $50 per acre per year. That, that's what Howard uh, uh, at least leased it tax. for to him for, yeah, at, at the time in there. Yeah. And high mowing seeds um, also expressed the investment that they put into it for fertilizer. And yeah, I, I, saw, I saw that, in their, I saw that in, their, in their request letter in the email. Yeah. But we can't do anything until we own that, and we right. don't own it yet. Right. And, and one thought was, uh, it's just, just a thought, that um, if we were to take part of that and turn it into like a community garden up there. I, I mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, you know, then, uh, um, then have them till it up for us or something like that and, and do some of that for us and in lieu of, lieu of some of that. Uh, and definitely be a community garden, I can tell you that, right there. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> No, it wouldn't. Yeah. Well, be a lot of community people stopping by. <laughs> <laughs> right next to the head. <laughs> okay, so if you want to look at that, um, that was from, uh, is it Tom? Mm -hmm. Tom, Tom Stearns. Stearns, yeah. That's, that's his request. That's Tom Stearns and his, yeah, yeah for, I, I, you, did I, you see it? I, I read it to me. Yeah. yeah. What 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 is the setbacks wrong on on something like that anyway? I mean, you're you're talking what 50, 60 feet property line on a gravel pit? Uh, 
It's actually worse than that. We had uh, yeah. We had Morrisville. This is regardless of water. This is the town zoning bylaw for gravel pits, new gravel pits, because there's a bunch of them that are pre-existing. They don't have the same rules, but a new gravel pit, sand and gravel, earth extraction, whatever, has a 200 foot setback. Yeah. <laughs> plus plus uh, 300 for equipment. So when you put those around the edge of property, you end up with a whole bunch less dirt to move than you might think you do going down. Oh, yeah. We still have a hundred year expectancy in our pet over. I mean, eh, we're probably 70 now, yeah, something like that. But that's based on unknowns, too. So yeah. we have to reconfirm that at some point. That's what the board wanted to do at some point with soil borings. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll get yeah, we'll it give it a better idea. Yeah, we're just sort of waiting to maybe combine them with Minash at some point if we go a little bit further on the purchase sale agreement. And we can schedule them both at the same time, maybe. Okay. Set bags like that, you lose 10 acres land up there. I didn't understand. You what was that, that rule? You lose about 10 acres of land. Oh, oh 10 yeah. acres out of the 25? Yeah, probably. I mean, you, 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 you surround it. I mean, you got the road on both sides. You so know. we'll just we'll use that portion for the community garden there all the way go. around the outside of it. <laughs> <laughs> and That'd be a, a new community a garden, all right. They can't, they can't keep vegetables, and they got with the one morsel right in the village, and they can't keep vegetables in it. Well, they, they've got a lot of homeless people go down there and visit that. And oh, is that what it is? Kind of help, helps themselves. Plus, they're planting other stuff there right here. <laughs> so, where are we at? So, that was everything discussed real estate purchase, yeah. Personnel matters under one VSA three thirteen A two through three. That's when we're up at the open meeting for that. We didn't move. That was a, that's the citation. If you do move, you're supposed to cite the statute to move it. Yeah. Oh. Didn't need that. Didn't need I just that. put a possible on there just as a placeholder. So you may or may not use it. How about other business? Anybody else got anything? It's brewing or anything you want to talk about? Um, I see Michael Rooney is still on. Uh, Mike, is there anything that you want to add? I'm wondering if you just didn't walk on. Yeah, I had to get unmuted. So. <laughs> not, uh, not really. I was, <laughs> you all know what we're going through, and I'm just sort of listening to see what else is going on i think okay. it's, i'm very frustrated so <laughs> this is a way of relaxing my frustrations <laughs> <laughs> this is how i create mine i know right <laughs> no i'm joking i actually enjoy the job <laughs> drives me nuts <laughs> yes yeah. so well if we don't have any other uh, business and i need a motion to adjourn I'll make a motion, Jaren. I second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And nobody opposes, and so we're adjourned. <coughs> Thank you, everyone.